It's an all-Brazilian standoff here in the lower bracket. Welcome back to the base stream here. W7M will be taking on Ninjas in Pajamas. Massive match. I cannot believe we've already got this all Brazilian bonanza happening in the lower bracket, guys, when you've got one team, of course, that is coming off wanting, uh, winning the last two majors, another team that, of course, has won SI. I mean, the fact is we have to send one of these two teams home, which is quite alarming this early on in the competition for obviously one of them, whoever it ends up being. Yeah, it's a happy, sad matchup for the Brazilians, of course. Unfortunately, one of their representatives will be sent home alongside Los today, mm. which is unfortunate. Of course, here is how today has shaped up across stream A and stream B. Of course, we were just witnessing Bleed and SSG. SSG taking their map pick in that particular series. But now across to stream B for us, um, obviously W7M taking NIP on the bracket. Overall, though, of course, we are in the lower portion here. The second round in the lower bracket. No second chances from this point onwards. Yeah, certainly not. Of course, with W7M, they lost to Wolves in that upper bracket. And then earlier today, they played Firex, sending them home to Korea. They won that one 2-0. And of course, now taking on NIP, of course, for uh, uh, W7M. Very much won that Firex game pretty comfortably. Although, from what I saw, we were obviously casting at the very time that the game was happening. It actually somehow ended up being a little bit closer than even our game between Bleed and Lois. So clearly for W7M, not really at their absolute best, but still able to get these results when clearly they've got some work to be done. Um, obviously then for Ninjas in Pajamas, they had a little tiny run up in that upper bracket, winning one series and then losing the other. Uh, and now obviously finding themselves in a position where they have to take on W7M. And, and you know, for all intents and purposes, two teams I think that have got obviously a lot to play for and also a lot to turn their kind of fortunes around at the Six Invitational and change maybe the perception of them obviously for w7m it's not being all rosy for a team that had so many expectations basically have to be making the arena at minimum mm. but the fact is they could go home today and what a travesty that would be so you got pressure on w7m for nip as well i mean obviously they probably go into this particular series as the underdog i think rightfully so but even still if they go home this early on at this point it becomes an utter bit of utter failure in terms of this six invitational for a team that is just stacked with talent yeah, for sure. NIP, of course, uh, having their matchup uh, most recently against Virtus Pro, which proved to be a uh, difficult game. They were unable to capture a map in that particular instance. Map 2 of Bank, more specifically, was a disaster for NIP. They were unable to claim a single round in that particular mm. match. But given that both of these teams are going to be clashing with a somewhat similar style of Siege, I'm very, very intrigued to see how this one shapes out and, and, and shakes down. You would anticipate W7M to go into this and be pretty firm favorites, but they're clearly wounded at the moment, and I think NIP could smell blood in the water. Yeah, we've got the map videos coming up, of course, for this series. So as we uh, get a look here, we head to Bank, then Cafe, then Clubhouse. Interestingly enough, the Bank and the Cafe pick is actually two maps that were played in the last series. Uh, for the side of NIP in that upper bracket game, you, as you just mentioned, actually, against Virtus Pro, they lost 0-7 on Bank, and they lost 6-8 on Cafe. Now, as we can clearly see, the Bank gets picked by W7M here in this matchup, probably looking at that most recent game that we saw from NIP where they got 7 0 would And then on the flip, though, obviously, a pretty decent Cafe, actually, from NIP, so they've elected to go back to that, but take up against W7M, who's actually only played one Cafe themselves this tournament. That, too, was against Virtus Pro, but that was a 3-7 loss for W7M. So that... In Interesting as we then have Clubhouse, by the way, as the circuit breaker decider. Now, very quickly, as it comes back to us, <laughs> a long list of results for Clubhouse when it comes to W7 at this tournament. M80, they beat them 8 7, bleed 7 4, 7 3 over Liquid, and lost once to 6 8 over the Wolves. So clearly, they've got extensive knowledge of that club, a lot of history on it. But NIP only they played it twice so far this tournament, in fact, losing both times. That makes it pretty simple for me. I think NIP probably need to win this 2-0 because I don't know how they're going to beat W7M on Clubhouse. It could happen, but it certainly would be a pretty unlikely result. Yeah, I think I would Yeah, definitely agree with how the things have uh, shaped up. I mean, the tricky thing is for NIP, I think regardless of the map veto, this is going to be one hell of a series if they are to get it across 80%. the line. 80% of the community in favor of W7M. Hard I'm to disagree. Very, hard to disagree. I'm finding it very hard to make a case uh, for Nip. Mm. Not impossible, no. but it would be one of the upsets of the eSport in history, probably. <laughs> to, to the, in the eSport in yeah. history. I mean, to be fair, look, NIP took down Fury 2-1 in that upper bracket game when 
to then take on Virtus Pro, a Virtus Pro team who are, I think have looked really sensational at this event. And then you kind of look at that first map, 8-6, really competitive, really close. NRP really kind of showing their attacking prowess. Yeah, left a little bit to be desired in terms of defense. And that really goes to show with the team, 59% defensive win rate for NIP compared to the 67% defensive win rate of, of W7M. That's quite a stark difference when you're going to take into account the defensive side of uh, side of better on now this is going to be owl me and you third map in a row where grim has been banned out it really does go to show his uh, strength at six invitational the Ossa ban as well does come through by w7m again here on bank i think also is a an operator that could be quite prevalent and has its uses throughout a multitude of sites uh, up above even down below so i'm not too surprised to probably see that from w7m as we head over to the defensive operator band yeah, we saw the Osa band out against Los as well, so not too unexpected in that regard. That was back in uh, November, so doubling up in that regard. Tubra out as well. Bit of an intriguing ban. Um, Tubra has probably not been as oppressive at the event as we once anticipated, especially post-nerf, but can still be quite impactful. It does mean, though, that with Valk taken off the board, again, to reiterate, Azami will be playable, so too will the Fenrir. So those are the two big ones. Else. Um, two other big defenders to keep in mind as we jump into this one. NIP will be beginning on the defensive half, but bank can be a tricky map to defend at times. So keeping an eye on obviously the objectives that they choose to rotate to and the impact that will have on these results. Again, looking back at sort of the numbers for both of these teams, unfortunately for NIP, the history that they have on bank is not particularly successful. Um, a pretty poor win rate for them comparatively. W7M. So we've set the stage that NIP will need to probably win this into maps as the decider is not particularly favorable either. However, winning this first map is going to be a very steep challenge. Yeah, make no mistake though, not counting NIP out of this series. We saw the 80% prediction for W7M, yeah, certainly the favorites, but we always love an underdog story and we have seen plenty of them, not just even throughout this tournament, but really the history of Rainbow Six Siege. So, you know, Funny things have happened. It, it almost seems on brand probably for this to be an elimination game for W7M where it's like, what, well, they got eliminated on the B stream against NIP? How did that happen? Like, I can actually foreshadow that happening. But it, it's going to take a very mighty effort from NIP. Basically wind the clock back a couple of years and find their absolute best. If they're going to be able to move through that. Opening start for Hertz, and it's a fast start as well for W7M as well. Already in towards Starford Open. Towards Beepers goes Hertz. Psycho holds the close angle. Drone just puts, uh, puts out a couple of shots. Hertz doesn't initially swing off of that and does have the information, but he knows that if he swings main stairs, there is that player in Elevator, of course, that can then trade. One's in the Elevator. Hatch is opened up, so there's an avenue for the Warden to get back towards the objective, and of course can now elect to play for time and just hold the cross and maintain it. Main stairs. Herd's a formidable force for W7M. Give him an opportunity to make a play and he will capitalize. Mm. Thinks about dropping the hatch initially, but better of it in the end. W7 have the advantage, so they'll be looking to play into that. So much time remaining in this round with so much map control already. Still a lot of denial as well for NIP in this round. Yeah, they've lost the player early on, Musi, but he's kind of done his job. He's placed those Vulcan canisters. One has already exploded over towards the hatch. And uh, then you've also got the smoke, the gas base from Pino. He's got three of them still, so he doesn't have to expend any of those. Nice little sight lines being opened up here with the Maverick of JV92. And more importantly, then Wizard as well on that Echo. He'll have the Yokai drones. Those bursts are going to be very impactful later on. Hard Breach opens that up in terms of the secondary Hard Breach, but Pino gets aggressive. Very aggressive over towards Blue Stairs as that secondary is going to open up the bot square hatch by Nade. Obviously, Pino with those smoke canisters, he is so important, so impactful late in this round. If they're going to be able to deny what will likely be a default server push take, Pino is happy to just play aggressive, try and deny the Blue Stairs push. Could get dropped on, he could get pinched. Hasn't happened yet, 60 seconds left. Information available then for W7M. They can collate that and use it for the final push. Nerds eventually could now skimper down main stairs, but the Goyo Canister will stall that out. Wizard, with full faith in the flames to push that buck back, will instead wait for the hatch drop here from the attack. Need to rotate diffuser now over towards the elevator hatch. So a back hit from W7M with 30 seconds on the clock. Yeah, interesting that as well. KZ just making his way in towards server. So they've really got good sight control around the site. Not so much on it, but from multiple different angles. This hurts. Oh, sorry, Cons gets that kill onto Nade. 
And then another one there from Hertz onto Wizard, and suddenly the round has fallen apart defensively for NIP. Consta the done his job over towards Elevator, it does get another one as well. So one through the hatch, one outside. Fortunately, they're completely outgunned, outnumbered. W7M's back hit has well and truly poor NIP off guard, maybe anticipating that more standard server room push not to be more pressure on the back of site. And for W7M, a really good start here on bank. Yeah, pretty classic W7 of attack there where our focus is on one of multiple key engagements throughout the, that fight. And despite the first not going the way of W7M, there's then three uncaptured kills on various points around the map that they are able to manipulate in their favor. There was that pick that didn't go the way of the attack. It was Pons inside of Elevator, but in the meantime, a flurry of kills elsewhere. And of course, knowing that the Warden was there, it was a pretty easy job for W7M to capture that round. So impressive from them, quick map control, steady towards the late round, and despite losing that first pick on the initial push, more than made up for it in classic W7M fashion. I know it didn't seem like the most fancy round, but W7M's ability to kind of just rotate off that kind of default look, they were obviously sensing that pressure, Blue Stairs server with the keeper barriers, with the gas babes as well from the smoke. So what do they do? They kind of just rotate off, they bring kit, they go over towards elevator, they go for that back push, completely captures an up here. Got even though Cons was holding a good position over towards elevators, then they can overload from other positions like main stairs, for example. So a really solid round from W7M where, you know, conventionally nothing too crazy happened, but just their ability to manage the round as it progressed is clearly on display there. We go into the second round. NIP are definitely going to have to pick up the pace, though. Defensively, can't just be sitting on site, allowing W7M to get full map control on a map like Bank, which can be really complex, obviously, to break down in terms of attack. So for W7M to already get one on the board early is a solid start. 42% attacker win rate at this particular event for Bank. So it does okay. It does lend itself to being relatively passable for attack. But it is Pino that gets the opening kill onto her. Shuts down that IQ. IQ, perhaps not the most critical of operators in this particular round, but would have been useful in dealing with the Electro Claws from Wizard, for instance. More importantly, though, a player now in the grave for W7M, so they'll need to fight from behind in face of this utility. Mirror Window in Janitor has been dealt with nicely, though, by W7M, I presume off the back of an Ash Charge from Keys. They now with utility in hand. He's on the Capital. In fact, down below, looking to now flame out this position. And this will be a sync with the Repel on CEO. That means that this position can no longer be held by Muzi. Instead, now a little bit deeper in Janitor. Doesn't find much, though. W7M not encroaching on the objective just yet. Psycho, though, caught off guard by an air jab. So four versus four at the midway point of the round. Yeah, there's no pressure on Muzi, though, from the hallway outside Janitor. So he's able to just, as you said, kind of play the back position in Janitor as that incendiary bolt was putting up flames at the very uh, precipice of that mirror shield, uh, window. So minute 20, Incendiary Bolt didn't do a whole lot. Music still has Janitor control. They did get that kill on the Repel though, catching Psycho in a bit of an off-angle position. He obviously just kind of overstepped and Cons is still in towards stock. So they haven't even cleared this position. Reloaded Does mean, of course, it's going to be really difficult to then flush out Muzi if they can't continue to go down below. Trying to just see what W7 have. It, it has to even try and dislodge him here. Outside of those Incendiary, it's really not much else. Nice kill for Gons, and again, still that stock control. Firmly in grasp for NIP, looking really strong defensively. Pino gets another one with KZ. Philippox with a second one from the Repel on a very acute angle, and JV finally flushes out Pino in towards the airlock they can go now. Philippox with the kit in hand, 40 seconds left. It's only Gons Amusi. Gons again gets involved from that stock position on the map. Philippox now by himself. He's already found two kills this round, but Musi to shut down, and it did come down to the fact that for W7M, they couldn't clear out Janitor and stock. Really well played from NIP, knowing full well they had that back of sight position the whole way through, good sight lines in towards sight and a solid round defensively from NIP. Yeah, Nip doing a good job to trust their structure there. You could see with about a minute to go, uh, the defense was not shuffling around much at all. They were all content with the positions that were being held. And look, to the credit of W7M, they had a pretty decent read and they kind of knew what to push, but they were walking into unfavorable gunfights and ultimately NIP did a great job in punishing them and a good response in the second round. I think that's probably going to be the trend throughout this first half, at least with NIP defending, is especially once they get the advantage, they are going to be more than happy to bunker down, hold positions, and they'll be ready for the split attacks from W7M. Well, a 1-1 one, one start. That's good news for us. Good news for NIP as well. Many, of course, probably don't give that much of a chance in this series against W7M, but just have that funny feeling. 
that gut feeling, probably more so than the brain talking that says that maybe NIP could just do something special here in this lower bracket match. Again, a reminder, the loser of this series will be out of Six Invitational. That's right, these two juggernauts of the Rainbow Six Siege seen historically. One of them has to go home already. We head to staff room and open area for the third round. Of course, for NIP, the basement is available. Optin to not go there as they continue on with the tertiary sites defensively. Also, now bringing the Maestro or Psycho, Fenrir as well for Wizard. So, changing things up a little bit. An immediate hit for Electrical here from W7M seems to be the play. Now, typically, this is facilitated with a Montang to help clear the space, but this time around, no Montang in play. So, we'll see how W7M look to pivot here and, of course, what the response will be from NIP. At the moment, as expected, holding firm. And the likes of the Maestro in play as well, which will be powerful in gaining information. Castles while in play from Muzi. And that will help to counteract things like the Metal game upstairs. But he's already with control on the Ram getting to work. You say upstairs, there's no defense upstairs from NRP. Completely foregoing any kind of defense towards stock, towards CEO. Long desk is obviously open for taking. We've seen the Ram with the Boogie Auto Breaches go to work now from KZ. Completely uncontested. A little bit surprising. One Nitro Cell available for NIP as well, so they don't really have the ability to really disrupt those above them. Only Pino and the Warden. Does mean horizontally that rush that we saw from Electrical got shut down really early on in the round because NIP had a lot of numbers on site. But as I mentioned, they've given up stock and we've seen the Boogie Auto Bridge open up those floorboards. Hatch, of course, being watched. Nade over towards Square. He's got a little angle in towards that bomb chassis position being held by Kong to keep a barriers. Herds, while that was the Nitro Cell, the one and only one that they had through the hands of Pino up towards Stark. Herds able to survive. Does take, take a big chunk of damage. Minute and 15 seconds. And the Nade that finally gets the opening kill on to Musi. Where's the response here from NIP? Walk now into the objective. Keeper barriers are providing some additional pieces of safety, I suppose, for the defense. Wizard may be the next to find an engagement, but instead patient for now. He sends a drone into open area, and that's a little bit more information for the attack. It is a three versus five in favor of W7M, who have torn this map apart. Early control converted now in towards the site, or perhaps not. Psycho just mowing them down, able to find three. Has it slipped at the final hurdle for W7M? I think it has. It's now just Herds at the double door. Two defenders with line of sight. And Herds, as good as he is, will find this a very difficult cross to break. The drop from Philippox, ineffectual through the hatch in towards sight. Double stack for Pino and Psycho. Smokes go out, but hey, there's a Warden on the board. Not going to really help you out that much, Herds. Sorry to say, with 10 seconds left, now into red time, this becomes awfully difficult. But he finds a really angle. On to Pino. Five seconds left. Spray through the wall. But there's one back from Psycho. The Maestro is strong in the one versus one to close it out for NIP. And a 2-1 lead for them here on bank is exactly what they need to just give themselves the hope and the belief that they can take down W7M and cause a shock wave to go through this tournament. Again, this is the map pick of W7M and a really strong defensive hold from NIP. I was a little bit questionable of the decision to not defend up above. Typically, on staff from an open area, you kind of see teams like to make sure that stock is hard to get because of those floorboards. Same even over towards CEO, depending on how aggressive people want to get on that extension. Nevertheless, though, their horizontal Sight hold was really strong. Stopped that initial electrical push. They were able to then, of course, have the crossfires and the trades. So far, really good signs from NIP. Yeah, that's probably the third, maybe fourth multi-kill or, or, or 3k plus I've seen with the older at this event so far. So the Maestro of Psycho getting to work nicely there in the previous round. And again, those keeper barriers making it difficult to trade that position from bot square. Line of sight on the hatch drop and the push through archives was just played into really nicely there by NIP. So you'll see Psycho double down here in round number four. Goyo as well getting some playtime too. Vulcan canisters up of NIP electing not to go for a full off strat this time around. All of the hatches have been reinforced, suggesting that they're going to lean heavily into that plant denial of the Goyo. As mentioned, smoke as well. Maestro 2 in play um, as long as those hatches can be fortified by the Kayed, which they will be, and the Aruni as well. Just in an attempt to stall out W7M a little while longer. Um, W7M, of course, the team most uh, that will not just go for the default plant. They will be more than happy to, again, split that attack, 
perhaps go for a back push and try to exploit any weaknesses that NIP present. Have to imagine though, this time around, NIP should be a little bit more prepared for that rotate, that switch up from W7M that we saw in the initial opening round where they went for that back hit. Started to bring that kit over from, from sort of server side over towards main stairs and elevators. Clearly, that was effectual. Catching NIP off guard, created the four versus one. This time around, though, NIP, while well, they're looking a little bit sharper in the last couple of rounds. Lee Box with the secondary hard bridge open up elevator hatch. There is pressure down below. It's Musi. Last time out was Cons, and he did a successful job from that position. And then so far, a massive stack, though, from NIP. Really locking down that position over towards server. Pino again on the smoke. Making sure that they cannot get that for free. I just wonder if NIP won't necessarily mind this time around to give them that back push in anticipation of it. Music, of course, over towards Elevators, holding a, a key position. And there's so many drones available here for W7M. Add on top of that, the Shock drones, the Yana clones as well. W7M, no doubt, will have plenty of information for this push. Mandela's to come through, though, from Philippox. Minute 10 well, on attack. the clock. He's to get the first herds as well. Moves to find at least one back, though. Kit down inside an elevator. So something that NIP can now play off for the rest of the round. Really good kill from Philippe Pox, though. Out of Ken Dallas. Has no more. Now loses his life as well. Con trying to just take the fight here. Loses out to KZ. Musi in a one versus three. When he has Kit info, 60 seconds, though. Time probably not. He's friend, and he just changes up the scope. Unfortunately, at the wrong time, and allows KZ to get a pretty free kill. As he un-ADSs. <laughs> And a scrappy round again down in basement. 2-2 scoreline here. Back and forth on Bang to begin with. I don't think NIP will be too happy with the way that Lockers and CCTV has played out so far. Clearly, elsewhere, up above, out of the basement, they've looked great. Yeah, W7M really putting on a great clinic as to how you can collapse on that objective. And if you remove the linearity that we see typically, or we saw in the past, especially on that particular site, it's just really easy to unlock it, provided you're sharp, you can isolate a couple of picks, and you have the information required. Um, the thing that really stood out to me for uh, W7M in that previous round is the fact that they just found the perfect trigger point where you saw the candles go down. That was probably off the back of just an, an additional layer of information that they were able to find, and they didn't waste any time to act upon it. Um, so many teams in that kind of situation can sometimes be like, okay, let's set, let's wait maybe 10, 15 more seconds, just try and maybe find something a little bit more. But they trusted themselves, back themselves in to get that push done. Obviously very well rehearsed on that particular objective. The two rounds to go inside of the opening half here. First map of this series, 2-2 scoreline. Really good back and forth action to begin with here on the B stream. Also SSG and Bleed currently live on the A stream. Not too sure what the score is there, but of course SSG winning the first map. Lots of elimination games happening here today. And six invitational saying goodbye to a lot of teams, of which one, of course, will be these two. Position secured. And IP go back up above. Top floor looked good here last time. Made it very difficult for W7M. They never were able to clear that stock and generative position. Instead, opting for that pretty standardized repel game. Leapox got a couple of kills from said repel. IP in quite strong, though, defensively outside of basement. And this was the power point inside of Janitor. They were unable to deal with this mirror. This time around, Musi once again inside of that position. No Capital being brought. No incendiaries, oh. but JV on the repel catches Wizard. Wizard, an 0 and 5 start in the grave early on. And Hurts, has he been spotted? Not too sure. Pons inside a stock and a beautiful shot. In response to losing that opening player, it becomes a 4 versus 4 once again. Stock being the position that W7M found tricky to clear out last time. And Pons did a great job of locking that down alongside stock hallway. More of an emphasis though on this part of the map from the attack. See those Rotero drones from Keys making it challenging for Psycho to get those keeper barriers down and set in place. Elsewhere, the defense are leaning back into the mirror, especially that one in Janitor is key, and I don't think the initial Ash charge was able to deal with that, and no Capital this time around means that the V7M need to be very clean. Stock drones are available. That was an ill-advised push there from Philippox. Good lines of sight, pre-established by the defense meant that he was walking into a death trap. Yeah, I mean, I think I understand the approach there from him for W7M. You want that top square control, try and clear out that stock hallway and eventually clear out Janitor, which is seeing a lot of play. Psycho over, over towards Long Desk as well, has the rotate hole in towards Janitor, so they can really double stack that position if need be. They're really struggling to deal with this hallway. JV though, up main. Talk about the direct approach. Swing from Cons though, again, good. 
Okay. At least taking a bit of a chance here. While that play in stock was over towards main, he was able to slip in down the hallway. Cons and Psycho in a two versus one. Nate is the only one left up. Casey's down and out for the count. So he's in by himself to world site now for Nate. Could go for the plant if he wishes to, but he has double red pings. So he has the information onto the whereabouts of Psycho and Cons. 25 seconds. What does he do with said information? He opts to plant. Really stiff. Not quite. Taken down. Well played there by NIP. Again, good control over towards stock. They're able to play around that as a defensive unit. And in the two versus one, they showed no signs of letting that round slip away. So NIP now with the lead heading into their final defense as we look back at round five. W7M did get the opening pick on the lobby repel, but again, found it difficult to break that cross established in stock. Cheers all round from NIP and a great start here on W7M's map pick of bang. We go back down to basement. Interestingly enough, it's the only map that they haven't won. Oh, sorry, the only site they haven't won so far on this map. Everywhere else has actually been an overwhelming success from NIP. Well, they're going to go for the full roam now, right? So last round was a very deliberate decision to reinforce all the hatches of rune gates, Gohir canisters, just trying to wither down a little bit of time. The problem is though, W7M don't really need much time to go for for the kind yeah, of attacking structure that they were implementing last time. So this time, NIP are going to fully commit offside. They're probably happy to lose a pick or two. They're bringing the Mirror, Solace, W7M in response though, in terms of attacker repick, are going to bring the Monty to perhaps go for a map clear and send the Monty forward. Could also go server direct if they wanted to. Um, but with the Jackal in play, I'd assume that they're going to combo those two and hunt down the roam. Yeah, Nade immediately on that Montang straight through tunnel over towards server. He has the kit in hand as well. Obviously that Ying understanding that that on-site hold is not going to be strong from NIP. There's no water, so there's Kendallis as well going to be so strong. This is going to be a direct approach from W7M looking to counter the room that NIP have set up. Now, mind you, there is still a little bit of on-site defense when it comes to those F0 lines by Wizard, coupled along with the fact that you've still got that mirror window. The F0 line down with play, of course, obscuring the vision of the Montang in Nade. Nitrous held in hand from Cons, and this feels like an important one in terms of the impact that it's going to be able to provide. In terms of upstairs, though, of course, that hatch becomes critical. Outside of staff and open area, looking down in towards CCTV. If you don't get control of that hatch, it does still become quite difficult to plant, but that's where the Montang can come into effect. Perhaps the Monty, though, to be a distraction here for the defense, whilst other players like Herds, maybe even JV92 elsewhere can get to work. Herds is one of those now top square. Again, with the attention drawn towards the Monty, he could have an impact in this round. Kandel is being cooked as the smokes are deployed. Keeping in mind though, Solace is in play and can give the read on the plant. That is Pino, of course, inside of Archives at the moment, and has a teammate in tow. That's big. It's Muzi to get the first with the Nitro. Denying that plan on its first attempt. It will be collected once more, and W7M will go for a second plant attempt. No Nitro Cells, no real chance to deny this. It's going to be a plant and a successful one from Felipox after losing the Montang of Nade, which felt like a big win condition. Now it's all about retake. 40 seconds here for NIP. Yeah, they got a bit of vert, but Erds is also top square. He can, can really deny it. As soon as they look to push out, he's in the more top area of the map. Something that they may not be aware of as well. I like the positioning here for W7M. I think they're going to have to just clear this in terms of horizontal. Great shot to KZ, though. Musi wins out on the Mozzi. There's Philippe Pox as well. And they run straight into his sight lines. The trade comes through from Musi again. Two in a row from him. Finishes off his earlier work. And through tons comes JV. Ten seconds. Someone has to get on it. Can be denied for a shot. Oh! JV! Are you kidding me? How the hell has he done that? Wizard, no chance. No magic tricks here. You can't save this round. JV with a massive clutch. <laughs> JV92 rotating all the way from electrical down through spawn into dirt, times it perfectly, lands the shots required. My word, what a play. Big, big round for W7M and frustrating for NIP, who, despite letting the plant go down, did a decent job in clearing this server position. But JV92 going for the sprint of the century. Times it perfectly, and that second wow. swing. Wizard, of course, low on HP, so perhaps not having the initial confidence to go for the pick. I mean, obviously just playing it in the moment, I suppose, it didn't land the shots required. Unlucky from him, and an even half between these two. Now, I might add as well, because I'm sure NIP is probably going to get a little hate for that way that that round finished. 
they didn't have the information on JB92. Uh, like I said, he ran from electrical yeah. all the way there. Yeah. Even if NIP knew he was in electrical so, at first, they would have been anticipating a bot square push. Who in their right mind would be running through spawn? Even still, Musi, though, was then actually looking in towards Tons. Then there was one other... Excuse, I can't recall the name that was going up towards blue stairs and obviously watching for that rotate. And then one more was on the plant. What else could have they actually done? That was just a miraculous play from JV. One, the rotate. Second, then the first two shots coming out on that peak. I mean, a sensational hero play to salvage that round for W7M, who I thought also played really well to try and counter what NIP were trying to do in that more aggressive roam game. They just went direct, hit site server. We didn't have to worry about an echo. We didn't have to worry about a smoke. And clearly they understood what they needed to do. 3-3 scoreline. Cannot believe, but it's that kind of back and forth game that we love. So many times we get to this position and the team just pulls away. The owner's now on NIP. Onto the attack in the second half. Yeah, I remember casting my mind back. I covered the Fear X NIP game. At that, that point in time of the tournament, NIP were one of the worst attacking teams at the event. So we'll see if they can buck that trend in this match, but they're not off. It's the best of starts. Heard up above, unimpeded, able to get a relatively easy opening kill. And we'll see if W7M F F can lead into that for the rest of the round. The one thing that W7M was so good at was getting really quick map control. At this point of every round, they had full map control and were yep. forcing the defense to bunker down. Same can't be said for NIP. Well, this is a bit of a slaughter round. A lot of these rounds so far in the first half were quite back and forth in nature. Hertz eventually got sh shut down on the Solars. Job done. Three drones is all that remains with 90 seconds left of the round. At any point, you kind of look at that in terms of the economy of drones for the attacking team. You've got to give the credit to the Solars for doing their job. Found a kill as well. So a strong opening round here from Hertz. Now he just has to sit and watch drones and cameras and see if he can provide any help from the afterlife. Towards Admin to open up Hatch from Pino. Does get delayed momentarily. Over towards Spot Square though, that Hatch has been opened up. 60 seconds left and Wizard to get to work here. So then a three versus four and NIP finally chipping away at the groundwork for this final push. As you can see, though, from the overhead, W7M on the defense, not under a whole load of pressure. Key still has three canisters, and the first of those will be deployed as the secondary hard breach will go on the wall. Unfortunately, that means, though, for NIP, for the remainder of the round, that default position will be under a load of pressure. Yeah, not a lot of time. And as you said, the smoke babes, one more as well for KZ. To be fair, if he throws this out now, there's still be... A little bit of time, not much, but a very minute amount. There's the final gas, babe. Could push through it. There's enough room to get over to that bomb chassis and go to the plant. There's also a rotate, double rotate from W7M at the back. Careful out, Wizard. They're pushing peepers. He's ready for it, though. But he does lose the battle to JV. So now, in terms of Vert, the advantage over towards the hatch is with W7M. And they're not even going to be able to get the plant down. Cons is by himself. Good shots. As great as this is from Cons, has to stick the plant. Does do so. Nade drops hatch. Easy kill. 4-3 lead now for W7M. Oh, I tell you what, if Cons had have committed to his instincts there and gone for the peak server hatch, he may well have been able to pluck an insane clutch. Not meant to be, though. The retake, the double retake from W7M up above, really well timed, well executed. Unfortunate for Wizard, he almost lined them both up. He wins that fight up above, and it would have changed the course of the round dramatically right here. He's unable to pull it off. Cons with a great attempt. In the two versus four, effectively one v four with Pino on the ground, able to collect all of the kills required, except for the final one. Loved the double rotate from W7M. You can see the outlines at the back as they were making their way up main stairs and understanding. Typically, you might see a team send one player, but if you do that, it's a one versus one. You lose that battle. You don't have hatch in towards admin. So they double stack that position. They both swing beepers and clearly Wizard just gets overwhelmed. There's not much he could really do. The, the fact that he was actually ready for that rotate speaks volumes to Wizard's game sense, but unfortunately he was just outgunned and outnumbered in that scenario. And then at that point, W7M have hatch control. Gons though, I mean, then on site was just going absolutely insane. He's up to double digit kills already. 10 kills for him through seven rounds played. It's a close back and forth affair for NIP and W7M, but now the first time, W7M starting to get a little control. You can start to feel it, can't you? They've got a grasp now here on bank. Yeah, we'll see if they can suffocate their opponents. It's one of the hallmarks of W7M. 
especially as the series goes on, they only tend to grow stronger and make less and less mistakes and give their opposition opportunities to get back into the match. It is W7M's map pick as well, so anticipating this to be a relatively clinical conclusion. And we'll see if they're up to the task defensively. Top floor will be a point of interest from both teams to kick off round eight. Nade on the roam alongside, I believe, it was herds on the mirror and that is the case he's playing a long desk at the moment that mirror window facing in towards stock an intriguing decision to deny some control on that part of the map of course unlocking from that vertical potential down below or preventing the attack from unlocking it even just getting into the map is proving to be a challenge for nip he's is down below we're watching vertical up above to the rappel line we'll see pino then with the yin pandelas to go deep Able to get two feet on the ground, and he has a red ping in through elevator. A live drone or two to follow, but made perfectly timed. Able to get away, and wizard on the lobby repel won't find that. Now, mind you, this is staff room in open area. This is not even CEO. Look at the amount of time that has been wasted <gasps> defensively by 77M. Mistro not to no, no, hurts no. potentially. Oh, yeah, Noise was made. Oh, Doesn't matter. The drop though for cons. He says bye bye. Nicely done from Hertz. And a second one to follow before going down the hatch. Job done from him. Dropped on potentially by W7M for this eighth round. A perfect way to really highlight what you can do in staff room and open area with that extensive roam up above. Ironically, we didn't see it from NIP on their defense of it, yet they're still one with a horizontal defense. Highlighting what you can do with two very different strategies, but right now W7M coming to the forefront. 60 seconds left in the round, and they've still got Nade, top blue. I mean, this is a very difficult round now for NIP to somehow find their way back into it. Some late droning from Wizard. And unfortunately, it's a round that looks like it could have gone away from them before it even really began. Outside electrical and so many red lines in front of Musi. Getting pressured back outside of the building. He's just fought back outside. 40 seconds left and he's running away. He's running away from the site. Running away from the building. And running away from W7M. Psycho towards Janitor. Trying to find an angle. A foot. A little toe that might just be too big. But no. Not to be. Has the drop potential. The time is running out. It's being squandered here. 20 seconds then. And Psycho will eventually drop into Admin. What? Good for one through the punch hole. But now a 2v4. Muzi finally makes his way in towards Bank. And able to find one pick. But his teammate falls. And Muzi does not have the diffuser. What a round from W7M. Strong from W7M, really, really strong. Very oppressive. We could see at the very beginning of that round as well, when we saw NIP on the repel game, they obviously had to flush out that top floor position, try and force W7M back, try and force them back towards stock and main stairs, and then try and get that foothold in towards the server inside of the map. But clearly, W7M just were not giving up those positions for free. We saw how long Herds was kind of sticking around inside of stock. He didn't want to really leave until he took something away from NIP. That something was cons. Then he gets another swing as well here onto Pino. And then it's like, job done. Now I drop hatch. Now I give up position before I lose my life. And a really, really well played round from W7M. NIP, to their credit, started to almost bring the round back. Even despite the fact that they were at a three versus five disadvantage. It came down to 1v3. But ultimately, the damage was done earlier in the round, and it really does now feel like W7M are in a position where they're starting to really get away from NIP here on bank. To top floor we go then, which can be, for the defense at least, a very difficult objective to lock down. To the credit of NIP on this particular objective, they did a great job centering their defense around holding stock and pressuring that position, making it difficult to clear with things like keeper barriers from the Zami and just otherwise good play. Another key part of the NIP defense was the mirror window that we're going to see replicated here by W7M, the one inside of Janitor facing the Repel. This means that you are unable to pressure from that position on the Repel with ease or get into the objective without you know, spending utility on that position. Now, W7M on attack often bought the Ash to directly counter those mirror windows. That's an interaction that now exists. We won't see that though from NIP. Instead, the Capital is going to be key. Maybe a Selma Deep if that's allowed to pop off. No Twitch either, though. So I'd argue that for NIP, the counter game here, especially into the mirror, is not great. So they're probably going to have to pivot their attack around other parts of the map. Yeah, the, the Capital can become a factor as well later in the okay, round. I mean, one thing that you can actually do is just smoke it. it, it once you eventually go in towards that entry, you can put one of those smoke bolts in towards the, uh, the window position if it is facing in. So, which I appreciate from what I can see it is from Janitor. Yeah. Thrones go out, Psycho, trying to see some information. Obviously, spot said Mirror. 
And obviously, you can send the buck down below and pop it that way. So a little bit of that old-style conventional approach. Did he get it? I don't actually think he did. I could be wrong in this, but no, yeah, that has not been popped just yet. Mm. Clearly the approach, though. Clearly something that W7M are aware of and could send someone down below to maybe go hunting for Pino. Still trying to find that angle. Also trying to maybe find a kill. The buck here, very strong. He can spot a couple of players running around. An opportunity. But a very difficult one. Those shots not easy to hit. 90 seconds into the round left Reloading. to go. Cover and he's going by quite quickly here. NIP haven't really done a whole lot. They haven't been able to pop that mirror window. Still a couple of players on the repel. Outside running around. Yeah, the repel key here for NIP if they want to go for a plant towards CEO, which I think will be the case at the moment with the hard breach close by the wall. Another smoke canister to go out. Or a bolt, rather, from the Capital. KZ, though, is locking down CEO with the Warden, so the attack needs to be mindful of the kind of utility that they dump in that position, but maybe not. Pino has been able to make his way over towards top square after lurking down below and contesting the mirror window, trying to find a kill of his own. Finally does so, and now can flush out that stock yeah, hole position. That's Philippe Pox behind the shield. Pino collects the diffuser, and I tell you what, NIP in a couple of moments here could be on for a plant. Yeah, they've done a really good job of getting that position over towards top square. Good flashes from Pino, that kind of forced back Leaf Box. Leaf Box, of course, can make his presence known later in the round, but the shots come through. Nate and Hurts at the exact same time combining. There's that kit that goes down. Pino losing his life. They've still got Psycho. Never mind. As I say it, he goes. Bye bye. Wizard over towards Spiral. That's one. That's maybe two. No, not quite. Good shot from Long Desk from Hurts to close this one out. And speaking of closing it out, W7M now on the verge of taking this map of bank, really pulling away from NIP. A somewhat resilient NIP. They're not going down in these rounds too easily. We're not seeing flawless smashes in these rounds. W7M are not beating them 5-0 in these rounds. They're close affairs, they're scrappy, but it is now four in a row to W7M. NIP just losing a little bit of that confidence, and now the timeout does follow finally, but three match points beckons after the timeout. Yeah, I suppose NIP wanted to get a read on those defensive setups, then take the tactical timeout to try and address a couple of key problems that they have identified. I don't think it was really the worst of attacks. They did a pretty decent job in terms of maintaining the repel control. Uh, the, the plant selection was probably the right one as well in that instance. But again, just connecting the dots um, didn't quite work out. Pino was a little bit unfortunate to not get as much value down below on the buck as he would have liked. Yeah. Um, wasn't able to, you know, maybe get a freebie on someone playing the mirror or... No one, um, well, no that, one was playing the mirror. No one was yeah. playing in Janitor. Yeah, until, I think until really late. I think also that's probably where you've got to give the plaudits and the, the strategy to W7M. It's like, oh, well, we'll set the mirror up in Janitor, but let's just not play it. We don't really need it. It's perceived pressure. Because if you're on that rappel and you're looking at that mirror, you don't quite know, is someone playing it? Will someone be playing it? There's the rotate hole in from Long Desk that can overtake that position of Janitor at any moment. And the fact that they were never able to pop that mirror, the fact that they were never able to really take that position meant that for the entire round, despite the fact no one was playing Janitor, it was perceived pressure from the side of W7M. 6-3 on their map here of Bank. Cafe to come after this, picked by NIP, of which W7M have only played it once this tournament, losing at 3-7 to Virtus Pro, which does give NIP a chance, but as we kind of alluded to in the pre-show discussion for this match, Clubhouse, very, very strong for W7M and will be a daunting task for NIP. In my opinion, I think they need the next three rounds. I think they need to send us to overtime and somehow win this map. If they're going to have any chance of getting past W7M. Hey, funny things have happened, but still, that's probably the task at hand for them. And W7M, I guess you could argue somewhat backs against the wall, find themselves already in the lower bracket Yeah. to double down on well, what they're not, has been an incredible year for them. They're not pulling their punches. They're not making mistakes. They look really clean right now because they understand. If you, if you start to make a couple of mistakes and you give NIP a look in, they, they're more than formidable enough to be able to punish that. And obviously for W7M, know NIP very well from the same region. They played quite a lot. And right now, W7M, I think, have looked really, really solid against the NIP team, of course, who also has their backs against the wall. They don't want to go home this early. They'd love to experience a local arena. Mm. That's why it's a happy, sad game for <laughs> the Brazilian fans, because one advances, one will be hacking Oh, we just had that bags. for APAC, so... Well, it's not, not quite it's not an event in APAC. No. <laughs> <laughs> one day, maybe. So, a little bit of a default. Switch at the moment from NIP, Casey holding blue stairs. Only frag grenade. 
As he gets aggressive, double drone. There's the SMG 11. Runs into the Kiva barrier behind him. You imagine running back down blue, someone swings and you just run into the Kiva barrier. 90 seconds left of the round, still five versus five. This very much benefits W7M the longer this progresses. And IP really didn't fight. Yeah, what an angle found by Hurts. What a sensational game he's had. 14 and six. There's the swing from KZ, the permission to play off of that. The shotgun now up close gets pulled out. He's full white from the Candela, but there's still no swing. He's still alive. Collins was never able to push in towards that position. Pino, as soon as he threw that Candela out, he dies through the hatch. And it's a disaster of a round for NIP. They've had some good rounds, some good moments, but this final or potential final round has certainly gone against them. Some strong play from W7M with 55 seconds left. It's up to now Wizard and Collins to try and salvage this round and keep this game alive. The use of the Azami, so oppressive. And you can see Herds just continues to play positions that the attack can't read. Wizard all alone 1v4. Yeah, and unfortunately for Wizard, all out of party tricks. Herds, 17 kills, solidifies the win on bank for W7M and puts them one step closer to moving forward in this lower bracket as they take down their local rivals, a 7-3 on the map pick of W7M. And a very strong showing as well. Quite convincing in terms of that overall scoreline. Still one map, of course, still to go in terms of W7M's progression. This series is not over. We will be heading to Cafe, NIP's map pick, where they have to really show us does something more. The first half from NIP was fine, was solid. They had a three on two lead. They probably should have actually maybe had a four two lead at the half. But evidently, as soon as they had to switch and NIP had to go on to the attack, they were just unable to deal with that wall of W7M. I mean, Herds in particular stood out to me as just being an absolute menace on defense. There were so many times throughout that half where he was the sole reason they got off to a really, really strong start. You think about like the the, the double kill in, in stock top floor early on. Um, final round, he's playing this strange army configuration inside of the side and is able to assist even a player being hunted down blue yeah. stairs. I mean, he was just an absolute menace. And if NIP, regardless of map, are unable to tame that, this is going to be a very, very challenging match, especially on the side of the attack. Yeah, six of the last seven, as you can see here on the little lower graphic. So six of the last seven really sort of encapsulating the dominance that we saw from W7M towards the end of that particular map. And look, Good start from NIP. You can clearly see it there. Winning three of the first five. I thought they got off to a really good showing. I thought maybe they were going to give us something that could contend with W7M the whole way. But as soon as that half switched, it was just a completely different story. NIP just were unable to get through the defense of W7M, in which, you, you know, you kind of look at here, you had a, a bit of a messy basement, but it was mainly that strong rotate from W7M. So you give W7M the plotter. That, that eighth round top floor roam, very successful from W7M. We saw that double kill over towards stock. Right, so again, W7M, it's not like we're looking at like NIP making mistakes. It's just W7M are actually in a position where they're setting the tone. They're setting the pace. They're aggressive on the defense. They're making life difficult for NIP. Even in that ninth round, top square gets denied, right? So that's again, W7M saying, hey, we don't want you to have this position. We're going to make sure you don't get it. So really difficult for NIP. We're going to be heading to a break. When we come back though, they do get to go to their own map pick of Cafe. Mashing. Working his way in here with these Rotero drones, and what a brilliant shout as of right now as well. These things can be very detrimental, especially to these evil eyes, but might be a little bit dual back and forth between those things if he's on the proper one, right? Drone mechanics up against the laser. Constantly getting spat at that. Almost a minute off the board, though. SSG haven't gave up a body just yet. E1D out, he'll get rid of that frost. Matt wish he tell Tells9 that he's worked his way into the bathroom, but they have no idea that E1D is so loud. They're not even gonna be able to make out that audio cue. Turd has to go in behind the half wall, but he's been discovered now. J9O with a nice angle here, and he'll be able to discover him too. Well, to find that angle on him. Fultz with a nice kill, and SSG take the reins here in round nine. Complete roam clear on the opposite side of the map. Aspie able to get the jump out. Maestro rotating upstairs to try and retake some of this control, but SSG are going in for the pinch. They're collapsing on the Maestro. They start retaking up top. Reaps finds one, but now downed. It's the 12 and four Ramai to try to fully bring back this round. Catches one, Ashen completely off guard. 
Down goes that Flores, and Reeves maintains control of the second floor for the moment. SSG going for the counterplay. There's opportunities here as SSG starts splitting. One going through bathroom, other on the opposite side. Reeps instead drops down. He's trying to force SSG's hand, say, okay, you can come for the execute, you can come for the bomb site. Then once they drop back down, Reeps will go for the rotation back up. It's a game of anticipating the other's moves and whoever can get further ahead might very well be the victor of this late round engagement. Reeps going for the rotate, holding the angle with that pistol. He hears Forrest stomping up above. Now going for the rotate back outside. Reeps holds his ground for the moment. Just hear the stomps of the players upstairs. Hot and cold. Kiritos in hand. Impact out. Reeps, have you done enough? Oh my. What a moment right there. Is not only does he pistol whip the first man, but the impact, the knowledge to know that that player was going to attempt to follow that up. Insane stuff out of Reeps right here. Not very many players in the world, folks, are capable of time and time again finding these clutches, but Reeps seems more than, I mean, willing to put himself in these positions and make some magic happen. 6-3 now for Bleed, a monstrous clutch from Reeps96. 15 and four right now. Completely dominating this game against SSG. We thought they had it. You see that coordination on that clear. They're able to use the E1D. They know the Rome is there. Sure, it seems the exact intel is lacking at times, but for that first pick, Ashen reacts in times. The Azami swings out. Then they find the player behind half wall, take him down through the soft wall, and then get a third, a 2v5 that was initially. And Reeps is able in the 2v4 right as he loses his teammate to find it. But again, it's the intel from SSG that is well and truly lacking. Nobody aware that Reeps is on that top floor. All right. Mistakes happen now, you know. But then we just have two players funnel downstairs. Reeps gone completely unnoticed, leading SSG on a wild goose chase. And they end up making the exact move Reeps accounted for and anticipated. No round gained by SSG this half so far. And Bleed just need one more to close out Chalet 7-3. Was picked by Bleed, but SSG doing a solid job of hiding this map for a while. Thought they'd have some solid considerations here, but Bleed just better in the pocket as of right now. This map looking more than in the backpack, which would carry us on to Night Haven, but Space Station with that timeout. Some solid considerations more than likely is they will look to try and go on a perfect streak for the next three rounds to force overtime on this map. The current lineup that they have looking pretty solid for a basement offense as they'll be looking to try and rip up the flooring here inside a fireplace hall. Make life a little bit more difficult for the defenders burrowing themselves down in the site. Use those boogies to create those openings. A little bit different usage than we've seen before. A lot of the times we'll see teams maybe open up that top floor and then that balcony, I mean, and then use those holes to kind of look down and get super long angles. So I want to see if Fultz will decide to do that as well. Use that final boogie to create a line across that heaven balcony. We'll have to see, though, he is rotating up to that second floor. Heard the buzz of a Maverick torch earlier, likely trying to open up that garage wall. Another EE1D goes out from Forest. No capitalization from SSG just yet. We need to see this entry. We need to see them start setting the pace. It's been bleed in the early and the late game who have so successfully forced SSG to cave and meld to their game instead of SSG to set theirs. Second to last E1D now gone. Ashen has moved his way in from office balcony into office proper. Reeves needs to cross this position. He's trying to win the fight. Instead, it's Aspie who swings. Forrest caught off guard. Great team play by Bleed, who can now start rotating back to sight. Well, it's moments like this right here. Once again, the coordination from Bleed on the angles. Body space station, but they're trying to add a few extra things into the fold. Hot and cold to get traded out immediately as Fultz will pick up one up from the verticality. Somebody trying to work their way up main stairs. It's going to be Huffin. Huffin. They're trying no. to reclaim, but Fultz, a beautiful move. A master class in positioning. Gifts him that kill. And now a minute remains for Bleed.
and for Turd to try and have a clutch moment up against Space Station that would send us to a third map. Huffin making a play he didn't need to make. A little bit of an overheat there. You've got the 2v2 on the site. You can play time. Sure, they can find intel. But if you're going to make a play like that, give them a 1v1. Maybe you catch them off guard. Maybe SSG's intel is lacking. But if Pulse is just looking at the right position, he's in bar. He can catch you off guard. Now it's cost her to teammate in a very, very important 2v2. They're down 1-0. They need this round to solidify map three. But SSG can still lose it. Flashbang goes out. Turret dodges it. He's got to know Fultz cross. No, he just walks in. Is Fultz watching? He's able to get the initial engagement, but there's the swing from Fultz. That could have been 7-3 right there, but instead, man advantage goes SSG's way. They're able to hang on a little longer on Chalet. Most definitely. Fantastic prospect. Both of these squads right now bleed with the opportunity to elongate their stay here in Brazil. At least for another map if they're able to pick up one more round. Space Station Gaming already with one successful round in this clutch opportunity to try and bring us back to overtime. That round pretty scrappy as well, going back and forth constantly as each team was trying to fight fire with fire, searching for that man advantage. But Space Station... After the dust settles, come out on top of the heap. It's King, at least for that round. Now, leading into this, one of the harder sites to try and deal with on Chalet, it's gonna be Bar Gaming. Bleed can take advantage of this Capital ban, though. I really like the rotations back to the side, the coordination between Asfi and Reaps as they moved their way from the top floor down through the dining hatch. Not necessarily the case here. I mean, you can, of course, move all the way in Master Bedroom and Office, but you're just going to rotate across the top floor. Here, because of that Capital ban, and again, the nade changes we've mentioned and everyone is aware of, you can sit in that library corner just at the bottom left of your screen right there, the southeast corner on the compass right now. If you're able to sit there and hold, there's not a lot of counterplay play from the attackers to actually go for. Bleed aren't doing it. So there are options. They're leaving on the table for what they could do. Instead, they're going with a much more normal Welcome hold back. at the top floor. They have the mirror windows and the Azami, but nobody actually in that death position. So there's going to be a very familiar defense at the moment for SSG. But still, you have to actually fight the members of Bleed, who, as this game has gone on, Reaps and Hoven. Sure, maybe not playing the best in that previous round, but still two players you need to worry about on this clear. Yep. The beauty of a situation like this for Bleed is, well, Carter, there's certain things that you can't strategize about and you must just do. And that's one of them, fight Bleed. Yeah, you have the strategy set up, you have the operators, you know where your path is supposed to be going, but what is Bleed going to do to you when you attempt this? Ashton's gonna work his way in downstairs, Forrest in tow, but he's wrapping himself around over towards the uh, gaming window, I'm going to assume here. Hot with a beautiful find inside a fireplace. Who is this? I think it's, I want to say that it's Reaps. Standing right around this corner. No, it's going to be the Azami. Oh, what a moment. He's going to be able to take down Hoven. I don't even know if Hot knows that he was actually more than capable of picking that up, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Mentalist could just hold that cross right outside of Bar. So instead, it'll be a pickup here from Turd, but big moment right now. It is a very big moment. I mean, things could change. Hoven slowly crawling up. He just got that Kiba off to shelter him as he went down. As he keeps crawling back oh! and back up. There's the find from Forrest. Attacking just in the nick of time, team. right as Hoven was at his most hopeful he might find a way back into this round. SSG play the patient game. Cut down two birds with one stone. 5v3 now. Ashen lurking down below earlier. Welcome back to the B stream here, of course, with W7M and NIP and looking at some of the highlights from the opening map, which was the bank. The map picked by W7M and a really good strong start as well from NIP. We see the clutch up here as well by Psycho in terms of one of these earlier rounds. And the vibes seemed pretty good in the NIP camps, guys. He's got off to a 3-2 lead, arguably. Should have closed out this round here. It was a massive clutch from JV92 to solidify themselves a like third round at the half of W7M. From this point on, though, W7M did not drop a single round and looked absolutely clinical on the defense. Yeah, that clutch really did mark the beginning of things to come for W7M on that particular occasion. They did a fantastic job defensively. So many players stepping up at different moments when required um, and unfortunately for NIP finding pockets of space finding wing conditions finding an opportunity to get themselves back into a round for instance proved to be very 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 challenging um, I guess as expected right W7M 
They are, of course, back-to-back -back major champions. They are looking to make one hell of a run here in the lower bracket. Yeah, they certainly are. We see the maps down below here. Of course, Cafe picked by NIP, which honestly, when you kind of look at some of the, the numbers for them, it looks pretty good. W7M's only played it once so far this tournament. It was a 3-7 loss against Virtus Pro. Whereas for NIP, yeah, I mean, a bit of a mixed bag. 6-8 loss versus Virtus Pro, which is a, a lot better than 3-7. They beat Ferex on it, of course, uh, and lost to DZ 4-7. So probably not like a super advantage for NIB going into cafe but certainly looks a lot better than the clubhouse deciding map which is coming up later if we do get there if it is required because right now the way that w7m looked back on bank as you can see here from some of the statistics they were absolutely formidable heard 17 and 6 look at the eps as well for jamie 92 which when you kind of look at things like eps it doesn't always take into account things like that clutch that he made as well that alone is worth heaps of points for leap box a really solid performance especially on the repel game nade and kz yeah maybe didn't get as much involved but clearly the the front three there for w7m were super influential for nip again they started quite well it's very easy to look at that scoreline and think oh well they got absolutely pants but it really was five rounds in a row by w7m to close it out after a strong start by nip on the defense of bank we head to cafe of course now for our second map the predictions has gotten a little bit better for nip three percent better it was 80 percent to w7m on bank now it's just 77 percent w7m i think the general consensus is pretty clear there from the social predictions w7m very much favorites to 2-0 and take this series and also send nip out of six invitational cafe a map that is strong for both teams um historical data suggesting that this is a map that they are both very comfortable on so i'm eager to jump into things um certainly paints a more favorable picture for nip and being able to fight their way back into this series but again i have my doubts on their attack they found it very very difficult to challenge the key playmakers for w7m and cafe is a map where if they can establish those key players in key positions and NIP can't dislodge them. Good luck finding rounds. Yeah, I, I think, you know, going back, kind of said at the end of that last game as well for W7M, it really was everything that they were doing, right? And you could probably sit back and maybe find a few nitpicks here for NIP. But for the most part, it what really was just W7M being incredibly oppressive, especially on their defense, which, unironically, they now actually begin on their defense here for Cafe, which is... Really going to be the, the litmus test for me, for NIP, is can they break through this defensive wall that W7M have clearly put up back on bank? Uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. I really hope they do. I'd love to go to three maps. I'd love to see Clubhouse. But, you know, clearly from the social predictions and really I think the general consensus is that W7M should close this out. That's the storyline we go with. That's now up to NIP to change that storyline. So as the bands come through, we assess how these sit with what we've uh, expected from these teams and the tournament as a whole. Monty has seen some target bans across the board, um, typically utilized by teams to clear for the roam and go for some set plays. Here on Cafe, some of those are like the Coffee Plant, for instance, um, General Map Clear, etc. Uh, and Capital, an intriguing one. We saw some cap play in the previous map. Um, a great way of countering things like Mirror Windows, for instance, flushing out those positions. Defensively, not a uh, not straying too far from what we would expect with the Valk Fenrir combo. It does mean that the Valk, though, is back in play. So Valk, Azami, Solus are going to be the big three that we anticipate we'll see quite a bit of here defensively from W7M. They'll be kicking it off on that diff half, that, that diff half, that defensive half. That has been a difference. Well, it's been a difference maker for them for sure on bank. So Bar and Cocktail, though, here for the opening run has gotten its critique, the site itself here on Cafe. So far, it hasn't really been favoring the defense all that much. Maybe historically, but right now at this tournament, it really hasn't been a go-to. A lot of teams are actually opting away from it. We had the pleasure of casting a little bit of Cafe earlier on today. And I believe it was Bleed that opted to pretty much ignore this site as much as humanly possible. W7M opting to go straight to Bar and Cocktail to begin with. You mentioned, of course, that massive juggernaut lineup of defensive operators. That you've got available the Azami, the Solus, they're, they're there. Obviously, Fenrir and Valkyrie banned out. Super if required, but not really going to be seen all that much on this particular map. Maybe down below inside a kitchen, you can see Super get utilized, but not really going to be as used as compared to some of these more impressive defensive operators. Herds, 17 kills back on bank. Someone to keep an eye on, certainly at the individual level, coming into Cafe to see if he can continue on with those heroic efforts. NIP reserved on their initial push towards the map. 
Herds the aggressor playing this mint window position. Thinks a little bit better of it though, and NIP are able to crawl forward and gain some control now. Obviously an opportunity to vert them down below if they want. And Psycho will take the initiative now to gain some control below. The logic bomb used and the call goes out. Will now end. NIP not finding a ton of value from that, but looking for windows of opportunity in. Lurk up the stairs from Wizard. Pino to drone out reading. So Felipox in a moment here should be under pressure. He is scanning for those drones. Don't know if he was spotted. Nonetheless, though, NIP looking to converge on this roam. Yeah, interesting you say. Not sure you got much from it. What they have been able to get is map control. As you mentioned, that kind of white stairs position has been picked up by Wizard using those logic bombs and E1Ds earlier on. And there is Wizard that gets that kill into JB92. He had no idea. Coming in from top white. Now KZ the challenge as well. He loses out to Wizard 2 at that battle over towards White Stairs. So again, that entry early on, successful for NIP. Another one to follow maybe from Wizard for Lee Fox. Yeah, eventually goes down. The Wizard show to begin in the opening round here of Cafe. It's down to just Nade and Herds remaining on the Warden and the Azami. And this bar cocktail site hasn't even really been seen. All the work done down below for NIP. Herds lingering over towards Lounge and Shop. Good angles in towards site. Obviously trying to block off that top red push and trying to keep shop. I like what W7 have done with the site, but I like even more what NIP have done down below with their entries, cutting off some of these rotates and have made life very difficult for W7M. Herds though still alive. And if there's any player of the 10 inside this server that could clutch up and step up in a moment like this, it's probably him. Red hot off the back of bank and he's been allowed forward into shop, but Muzi will shut that down. May well be a flawless round here for NIP on the attack to kick things off. Denied by Nade. He's in washrooms currently, able to swing around and dash across to maybe try and find something. 20 seconds on the clock and NIP will go for the plan as Nade looks to dislodge more of this attacking setup. Unfortunately though, unable to find much opportunities, not really presenting themselves. And now NIP can fall back, establish these crossfire positions. Nade, well, he gets two with him. Unfortunately, though, it's not enough. And NIP finally get an attacking round in this series. Yeah, and a really good start for them here on this map, considering for W7M, bank defensively, they just looked impenetrable. To begin immediately, NIP, Wizard, they get that control over towards White Stairs, those early logic bombs, and EE1D gets them inside of the map. He's able to convert essentially three kills. One was an assist, but nevertheless, the same outcome. And then from there, NIP were able to make their way up towards the site, eventually got the plant down. Attacking was the issue for them back on bank and a solid start here on Cafe. Admittedly though, when you look at the attacking win rate of this map for this tournament so far, it is the second best, 47%. As much as that meta is super, super defender sided, so defender sided, there's not a single map that is above 50% attacking win rate. This is one of the closer ones. And so therefore there is the expectation and therefore the anticipation that NIP can do well here to begin, especially considering it is their map pick. Apologies if uh, sound is bleeding in from uh, the other stream. Ten seconds to go. Because bleed up against SSG is coming right down to the wire. Of course, you can Five watch that over on the primary stream, twitch.tv forward slash rainbow six. I would recommend it because it, it, it's a it pretty is, big game. <laughs> it's quite close. And yeah. you'll probably be back here in a couple of rounds yeah. anyway. Maybe. Who knows? We'll see how that one shapes up. But. Round number two for NIP and W7M. NIP doing a good job dislodging the roam in the previous round and then yeah. able to spearhead that into the objective. Composition though, this time around, perhaps indicating that it will be a little bit more direct OSA in play. So Talon Shields can be used for plank coverage. Good luck for Flank Watch and the Ying of Psycho to help gain control. Perhaps a little bit deep. Music could be a threat as well. Probably the operator that you want lurking around, trying to pinch, find a position or two. There is a roam employed from W7M, so vertical would be a potential win condition for the defense if left uncontested. Yeah, I wonder how aggressive and how much W7M will commit to said roam. Is it just simply to eventually rotate back up red stairs, maybe make your way over towards train and mining? Obviously for NIP, the conventional approach in terms of getting that vert, opening up the floorboards, is that really going to be a factor? They've got the bark, the gridlock is there also in terms of the tra uh, tracks dingers to deny any of those rotates or at least make it more difficult. 
Massive clear here from Pino. All the way up towards top floor. In through bar, into cocktail. So really not making sure they leave any stone unturned. A minute and a half though. Time a big factor now for NIP because they've gone for that massive roam clear. Third floor. And now leaves them vulnerable to the time as they make their way over towards the site. Where's it now with the stingers going out over towards Red Stairs? And now Pino can do the work over towards Reading to open up some of these floorboards. So the vertical now established or in the process of being established from NIP. Secondary hard rage on the freezer hatch. So the attack posturing for a coffee plant currently and W7M based on the sound that's being projected in the lines of Simon and Eno. Duck should be aware of that and looking to reposition themselves for plant denial. Now no nitro cell in hand for W7M so that's something to keep in mind. They could of course flood that position with impact grenades if they're unable to find line of sight. 45 seconds then on the clock. Pino has done his job very very well creating this line of sight. And with all five members of the attack still standing, he should be able to post up in this position and hold the vertical by ground. Now, W7M have just not really given NIP much of a chance. They're not over-aggressing up above. They're not really pushing themselves into difficult positions. Hurt's just sitting VIP behind the shield. Just says, all right, well, I mean, if they come white stairs, I'm ready for them. Philippe walks over towards prep. They're not really giving much of an entry point. There's that drop down eventually coming through. But of course, who was watching? VIP, that was hurt. Nice trade at least from Cons, And he had to force, got those talent shields and can go and get the plant down on the off side. But up close, they might not be aware of JB92. Doesn't matter, because even in the hallway, it's a slaughter fest defensively by the hands of W7M. Cons has to get the plant down. Denied though, he loses his life. And that is all she wrote. The time runs out. W7M on the board here early for Cafe. NIP doing an okay job in that round. I think, unfortunately, they had voiced that that was the push they were going to go for. I'm trying to think of a better word for voiced. Um, I suppose projected, that's what they were going to go for, and W7M tuned into that frequency and were able to formulate a plant defensively to deny it. Arguably, they didn't have the best in terms of secondary utility in particular to deal with it, but obviously good positions, great shots. VIP being locked down by hers was a key factor as well. Ons tried to force his way through, but advanced positions from the defense, which read nicely into that attack, were rewarded. W7M back to the sort of form we saw defensively on map one of paint. Now, I do want to mention the slight spoiler. If there is anyone that wants to know, or sorry, not know the result of the A stream, please close this off. Three, two, one. Space Station Gaming has taken down Bleed. After Bleed had a 6-3 lead, they lose Five it out 6-8 on the second map. Now, why is that important? Well, the winner of this game will now take on SSG, setting up potentially a clash in the lower bracket between W7M and SSG if this continues in the direction that it is currently going. Obviously, NIP looking to change that said direction. And why here on Cafe and the map pick of NIP. So the winner of this series, of course, now they take on Space Station Gaming. That match not happening, of course, today. That would be, I'm assuming, tomorrow. Nevertheless, of course, we still need to find out who SSG will be playing. And he'll be able to walk on. If our slow and steady for NIP. Not really much being given to them. Herds pops up through the window, maybe yeah. wanting to go for this peak. Tell you what. Really speaks to the volume of the confidence that Herds is displaying throughout this series. 17 kills back on bank. Despite a couple of shots at this window, he still elects to hold it. My air jab is deployed. Well, the air jab is deployed in anticipation for a jump out. Although it looks like that first air jab actually has been muted off by Herds inadvertently. Is that his place on the red wall? Freebie for Herds. Drops prone and cons upside down. We'll feel the wrath of the Az Azami, or of the mute rather. It's also the hard reach down. So that's a big loss for NIP and a big stumble on a position that they should be anticipating now that it's the second time we're seeing it. I don't know if it's going to be that much of a matter in terms of reading a fireplace, but not ideal either way. Certainly would rather have at least all fire players up as well. Down to a minute and 20 left, and it's just repel, repel, repel from NIP. You've got to get inside of the building. That's where you can do your best work. We saw that earlier in the opening round. They entered the building off the back of the Logic Bomb and the EE1D. They got White Stairs control. They were able to cut apart W7M, but right now it's just all about this Repel game. 
and it's slow and it's methodical, yes, but W7M are happy to play against this kind of style, this kind of pacing. Hertz continues to just hold this position. The ego vault. Yeah, Jab, but no one there to even punish this at all. Oh, and a beautiful shot from Yuzi. Never mind, the punishment does eventually come through. The Hertz gets nothing on the vault out. 45 seconds left. That brings it back. Well, four versus four. Shot over to a thief off from Dino. He actually thought he was getting maybe jumped out as well, but it's a teammate on the repel. Wizard getting the kill onto Felipe Ox, just barely stays alive. 30 seconds with the three versus three. Music goes very deep. Where's the trade? Eventually comes through from Pino. Grabs that kit. No. Leaves it behind momentarily. Now goes back for it. 20 seconds. And a plant is required. The solace still in play here for the defense. Will JV92 have an impact default. in Vault this is. round? Pino is going to drop down, go for the default plant, juggle it to Wizard. Good decision. Wizard oh Laura on God. HP. The Goomai now needs to be extracted. Pino will keep his in. He needs to play coverage. Lands the first shot, but the Goomai takes him down. JV92 can round the corner, deny the plant, and confirm it for W7M. Uh, very quickly, there's nothing more they could have done in that situation. Firstly, Wizard has to get that Goomine out, otherwise he's going to die on the first tick. I mean, he's basically going to go down immediately there, and he obviously needs to get that plant down, so he had no choice. Secondly, Pino in that situation too needs to provide cover. If he's sitting there trying to stick that, uh, pick that Goomine out, then he's going to die. And the plant's also going to be denied. I think he makes the right decision. He eventually gets the down. Fortunately, the swing comes from pillar side rather than hallway side. And eventually they lose their life to JV. Those two mines are very impactful though, regardless from the Legion for W7M. And they go 2-1 up here. Really good start for them defensively. They go back to Bar and Cocktail. This was the site opening round where, of course, they succumbed to that pressure. Wizard over towards White Stairs on the entry. But we'll see if they've learned some of those lessons. But at the very least, right now, again, W7M bringing this really solid defensive gameplay that we saw from Bank now over to Cafe. W7M, again, doing a great job. Players like Herds in particular with those power positions, just able to pluck that initial pick, making it very challenging for NIP, who perhaps time management isn't one of their strong suits at the best of times. You add on to the fact that they're playing from a disadvantage, and naturally most teams are going to find it really difficult. So, we away from W7M as the first quarter of this match concludes. Now, of course, NIP having a read on these defensive strongholds will perhaps be able to refine these attacks a little bit. Heading into the fourth, we go back up above, arguably, and I think statistically as well, the weakest site on the map. So, maybe an opportunity for NIP to exploit things. Last time, getting quick map control, but I think this time around it'll be a little bit more of a traditional push with the focus on getting rift control first initially, opening up those hatches, and then probably contesting this Azami relatively directly on things like the Metal and the shop as well once they get control. Just little moments for NIP that so far in the series has cost them. Uh, they've been, by and large, fine, but it's just W7M have just really stepped up their level from what we've seen of them, I think, at this tournament. Starting to probably find a little bit of that groove, really starting to get that swagger back. They're aggressive on the defense. They're making it really annoying for NIP. NIP are just kind of stuck on the repel, hard to enter. Psycho, oh, well, I said it's hard to enter. It makes its way into shot, but it just loses the nade. Far too convincingly. That was a nice, aggressive early push from Psycho to try and open up. But you're also on the yin. Those Kandalas now are gone in terms of the late round entry, the late round execution. Down a player as well early for NIP. Aren't you so... Sorry, breaching round uh, there. Open up that window over towards lounge. 90 seconds left. And again, W7M just finding himself to be quite difficult to overpower. And KZ still inside lounge. And on cue, he finds a pick. Probably good for another in a moment. It turns elsewhere though to find one. He has this attacker on lockdown. It's Boozy with the Diffuser in hand. And there is the kill confirmed. Unfortunate from NIP, they cannot break down that defense. It got off to a rough start with the Ying falling first. From there, all of that utility was so difficult to clear. Well, the initial push into, into shot from Psycho is fine. I mean, it's actually pretty good. Get aggressive, try and overload a position that clearly is uh, impactful for the defense where you want to defend that cigar shop position can then kind of unlock the round a little bit. We saw it there early. Psycho knew the game plan. Shake of the head because there's an understanding that there was an opportunity that went begging there. But as soon as that death then occurs, you probably need to change into your Jack secondary option for the round, which should have probably been something like a white stairs approach. Instead, it ends up just being 
a quad stack over towards top red. And that becomes quite easy then for W7M. And credit to KZ as well on the Azami holding in towards lounge. He's moving around. It's not an easy position to hold because you're actually susceptible to any kind of pressure from down below. We saw a couple of floorboards get opened up and he's just constantly moving around. We saw it in some of the earlier rounds too on Bar Cocktail. We saw Herds as well earlier holding key positions at those windows being aggressive. So NIP have to kind of be aware of that, that unfortunately you go for that aggressive play, it backfires. You know that it's going to be even harder to then break down a defense of W7M that has looked so strong in this series. They go 3-1 up and it really feels like that opening round for NIP feels like a lifetime ago. The Blitz re-picked then round five and with the Grim no longer banned out, like was on the previous map, Psycho will be filling that role as well. So we could see the changing pace. Uh, the pace change up rather a little bit here from NIP ramp it up to another level maybe try to catch W7M off guard so we'll keep a close eye on cons throughout this round and see where that blitz is looking to spearhead the attack keep in mind that Souls is in play so direct counter available and being able to spot that out and deny plant as well top down drone work here from NIP so it won't be the snappiest of starts to the round for the attack, but the beauty of this kind of lineup, it come down, it comes down to the trigger point. You find enough information, or find a window of opportunity. It's all about capitalizing upon that. Pino with vertical, DMR doesn't land the shots though, and that defender can skate away. That being easy. Yeah, yeah, a little, a little cheeky there as well from Pino to understand he's not going to catch him if he just goes straight towards top white. Instead, actually opens up the floorboard to see if he can catch him on the rotate. Game sense. Wizard it was like a lifetime ago where he got that opening 3k to begin in, in the opening round. Bring the blitz, they bring the groom. A real change up in the approach for NIP, like you said. Low walk down white. Four cons looking for a push over towards the freezer side. Obviously, Hurts behind that shield inside of VIP. JV over towards Whiskey. Yeah, map control has just been so prevalent for W7M. I mean, how many times have we seen NIP struggling to get into the build? Oh, it's an aggressive swing from KZ. Could have almost found a double. And then that allows Musi to push in, but there's a Nitro Cell. The response from W7M is just rapid. Sure, it's an aggressive swing from KZ, but they are able to then play off of his death so quickly, so efficiently. And despite the Hive Launcher that has been utilized, the Red Ping, they can't really do a whole lot with it. Finally, Psycho, now in one versus two. Playing off of his own high launcher. Reloading. Bots one knows where the kid is. Still has 50 seconds and one versus two. And that's going to deny even more time. Nicely done from Nate, actually. The Vulcan canister on top of that kit is just going to buy even more time for W7M. One shot is all it takes and Psycho will fall. Needs one to get this into Freezer. Yeah, I mean, one Hive Launcher available could dislodge coffee and put Philippox on an island, but how much can he actually do off this info? Attackers recovered the up the kit. 18 seconds. Unfortunately, though, no information as to where Philippox and Nade will be. And as soon as he gets into sight and starts trying to get that plant down, they can both swing. Did get a ping onto Philippox, stepped into the bees, they go buzzing. But as he moves forward, he has to get this plant down. He cannot get off of it. Nade's over towards Bakery. Has he got the sight lines? No. He's going to allow Psycho to get the plant. Psycho's gonna have an opportunity. One chance, one shot. Needs to hit the head, and he does from Psycho. He only had the one chance, but he finds it, and it keeps NIP alive. A much-needed round win. <laughs> wow, NIP have been looking for a big standout moment like that to really give the team a confidence boost, and Psycho able to step up to the mark. One hive launch from the pocket, one shot's worth of HP, and he makes it count. As you mentioned as well, really, realistically, only one opportunity to pop up, land the shot, get the kill. Otherwise, he would have been hunted down. There's some great work there from Psycho. Fantastic in the clutch. And W7M, I'm sure, will be a little bit frustrated that that round was allowed to slide. Yeah, I mean, it started off with the aggression again from KZ on that Solus. He loses his life. Yeah, gets punished. But then the trades all come through because W7M have got good position. That was the little moment there, Philippe Pox. I'm not too sure exactly what happened, but he stepped into the bees at the last second, maybe tried to time it. I'm not too sure. Obviously, we were kind of watching the POV of Psycho, and that just gave that little bit of information for Psycho to play off of as he made his way in towards Freezer, gets the kill onto what looked like a disorientated Philippe Pox. 
Nade was over towards Bakery. He was a long way away. Obviously playing time. And he was such a distance away that he could not deny the plant. And a really good pop-up shot from Psycho. 2-3. Those maybe just joining us, not too sure if the A-stream is over just yet, but nevertheless, this has been a very dominant performance from W7M back on bank at the beginning here on Cafe. But a real standout round from Psycho. Just gives NIP a lifeline, a chance to maybe try and build on that. This is their map pick as well. So the final attack then for NIP will be spearheaded from the top floor. Pino once again likely tasked with vertical pressure. He has been strong in that regard so far. He'll need some information though if he's looking to flush out players and Psycho will be the first to drone ahead. I believe it's Herds inside of train and it is on the cap can now confirmed. Muzi meanwhile will look for a pinch now up the red stairs. And if NIP can combine here, there is a chance they're able to place him oh, on an island. The JV92 through the wall. It's an insane shot to open up the round for W7M. Well, that's a tilter for Muzi. It's a tilter as well for NIP. After the clutch from Zyko, you lose that finger. No adrenal surges. And they went fast again, trying to get a bit of map control. Over towards Red Stairs, then pushing down the hallway. Now means, of course, Psycho is a little hesitant. Make the same push, but he, either way, it does have to kind of do something here. JV caught towards Pillar, though. Lovely shot from Gons. Finished off by Psycho. Now they got themselves a little bit of control over towards Train Mining. Of course, it's reading and fireplace though, and they need to get the plant down over in a different site. Ons does get tagged up. Low gets onto the drone. Minute and 10 seconds of time. He's got the time to get on said drone. Not just self thrown out elsewhere around the map, and it's ineffectual. Unfortunately though, for NIP, Herds and Nade both have fantastic angles in towards this objective. So somebody needs to break the cross. Maybe Psycho with the Hive Launcher to create said space. What? He almost gets caught dry peeking with oh. the launcher, but he responds and shuts down Herds. That's why for the montage reel, it was like a 360 with the Hive Launcher and then pulls out the actual weapon that does the damage and gets the headshot two in a row now from Psycho. Previous round into here. 40 seconds left in the round to close out this half. NIP with love third round. Taking on to the defense into the next half. And as they start to open up and put pressure in towards reading, they've got good pillars control. Double white stack now for W7M. And on the repel, outside as well. Cons gets one on to KZ. Nader trade comes through. Does kind of keep W7M in a good spot, but Cons gets a third in the round. And the bees are buzzing once again. Of good measure. It's down to Nate and a one versus three. And all he has to do is deny the plant if he can find an angle, but not from this position. He'll get one. And creates a one versus two, but it will be a retake scenario with one outside and one towards White Stairs. With the rappel being held, Nade surely won't be able to bring this one back. The retreat oh down the stairs and the shot through the rappel. Nade's position confirmed by NIP. Has a nitro. Has a read as well down below, but doesn't have a whole lot of time. And nitro up there, the rappel. Will it land? No, it does, but it doesn't hit the player. That did land on the window cell, Pino, far left of it, and that's probably the round. I don't know how Nade would be able to clutch it here without that said utility, unless he's going to try and force Pino in for the repel. Really smart behind the bomb chassis, no time though. Time the biggest factor. He is on it. Cons can it's make his way up white stairs, has the red ping. That should be the round. Well done from NIP. They get their third round in the half. It's a 3 3 scoreline. Yeah, discipline there from Cons. Did a fantastic job to get his way down white stairs and despite being pinged out wasn't baited to anything back up above trusted his teammate on the rappel and then was obviously close enough to ensure that the last second counter defuse attempt was squandered as we look back at the final attacking round for nip i mean psycho did an amazing job to break that cross that was established allowed the plant then to go down so many close engagements there for both teams but Ninjas in pajamas, able to edge out on top. And we'll see if the defense can now stand the test of a very scary W7M. Again, for those just joining us that maybe didn't see the first map back on bank, it was actually 3-3 at half as well, guys. If you recall from that point, it was four rounds in a row. Two W7M actually got the last round of the half, but technically made it five rounds in a row to close out bank. After a really solid start from NIP. NIP yeah, led bank 3-2. Lost five rounds in a row. Well, NIP have now made it 3-3 here on Cafe. 
what happens from here. At the very least, they go on the defense now. The issue for NRP back on bank was their attack was clearly not good enough, and W7M's defense was really strong. Well, now they find themselves on the defensive cafe, looking to close out their map pick and look to send us to a third map and keep the pressure on W7M. The longer the series goes on, the more and more pressure compounds onto W7M. Two-time major champions potentially could find themselves in an elimination map, let alone series, if they lose here on cafe. NIP then leaning into the mirror. We saw quite a bit of uh, mirror play from both teams over on Bane, and that will transition out in towards Cafe. He went inside of Washrooms to help lock down that lounge position. There is counter utility though available for W7M, namely the Ash to directly counter them. Could also look to flush it out with some x Kyros charges um, lower as well, so that it can't be held. We'll see though if Muzi is up to the task of holding this position in combination with the Azami of Psycho. It's been a hot, a bit of hot and cold throughout this match. Hans is flashed out. He's top white. NIP investing a lot of players to help hold the top floor. W7M leaning heavily into the repel. The drop now finally comes through inside of shop. The psycho's take the low. Or off guard on that particular cross. No immediate trade though from NIP. And perhaps an opportunity to go for the res. Muzi though, under so much pressure, caught behind the softball, punished. W7M will oh punish you if you make mistakes. And now in the one versus four, Wizard needs to pull off a minor miracle. But W7M are ruthless. They will hunt you down. No mistakes on that first attack. I mean, that was just straight out of Assassin's Creed at the end there with the double vault over kill, white stairs from KZ, clean. What an attack from W7M. And that's a statement made to begin this second half that they are not going to be pushovers. Just because they're on the attack now doesn't mean that NIP are safe. NIP need to be a little bit more proactive on the defense there. Completely outdone by W7M when it came to that utility department. At no point could they really get good control through that white corridor. Completely flashed out by the Candelas. Eventually then smoked off. They were full, uh, so, sort of forced back. The one good play was Wizard down below with an Itracel. He actually got at least one looking up towards Shop and kept a bit of pressure in the round for NIP. But outside of that, everyone else just got completely strangulated on the side. W7M, retake the lead. They got 4-3. Again, really highlighting how strong they can be. But NIP may be with a trick up their sleeve. We go to mining and fireplace here in the eighth round. We'll see if that can be something that NIP can use to their advantage. Again, they did pick this map. This is the time to use your strats. This is the time where you've cooked. And now to present. You gotta serve it up. Serve it up. And, and they have to serve up something better than that last round because defensively, yeah. if you sit back, you know, you think about Bar Cocktail, a lot of it really is kind of sitting back, but that probably plays into the hands of W7M. We saw that back on Bank, saw that in that round. NIP at their best so far in this series have been when they're proactive, they're aggressive, they're making it difficult for W7M to do things. If they sit back, W7M are more than happy. Well, we'll see then if a change of scenery changes the tide for NIP. The Goyo in play this time, so perhaps an opportunity to amuse it with those Goyo canisters to stall out this push a little bit for W7M. Of course, they can only place so many and deny so many areas for so long. And W7M again at the experts in Rainbow Six at exploiting weaknesses and finding the easiest passage towards a round win on the side of the attack. Early pressure from Skylight and flashes to come through from Nade Herds has already established the same himself inside of Lounge, and NIP have given quite a lot of space already to W7M, much like we saw on Bank. Yeah, obviously, Candela's used here very extensively by JV to clear out that white corridor position, smoked off as well, but it does get them into the map. Something that NIP kind of struggled with in the first half was getting into the map at times. The W7M are more than happy to expend their utility to get themselves into good position, especially the Burt here on a mining site. One trapped in Cocktail, a very difficult pass to get out of that position. One though, I think that has been achieved at the very least though for NIP, 90 seconds is all that remains. And there's the good focus towards top white, KZ hunting down, hatch is open, drop is there. Flash does come through, but a little too late. Psycho did lose his life, so Noah's army. And a good advantage now for W7M where they've got top floor control, they've gotten a kill. Yes, they expended utility, but it was rightfully so. Nice little swing for Musi. Outside of reading, in towards kill, and he gets a kill onto herds. Brings it back to a four versus four. Yeah, opportunistic play there from the defense. And W7M, despite the util or the information gathering rather being really good so far, not as much the case here. You look at that drone economy, only one drone standing. 
belonging to Keys. So that could well be a challenge for NIP or pardon me for W7M to overcome and NIP can look to exploit that. 45 seconds on the clock and Cons is down below. Keys is looking to hunt him down but Wizard to protect. Almost gets a second but taken low on HP and he can fall off and play into his goo mines. 30 seconds then and W7M We'll find this a very challenging round to convert. Yeah, that, that red stairs position should be absolutely inundated with Goomines right now from the Legion of Wizard. He's been alive the entire game. Really difficult position to push through. Nay, can't win that battle. That's kicked down as well on the floor. Fleetbox 2 finds himself in an awkward position out of this one. JV, the solo over towards Pillars, but coming up for Brown, that's going to be NIP taking this one, evening things up. 4 4 scoreline. Yeah, clean there from NIP. Uh, again, despite giving W7M a large portion of the map early on, they were then able to bounce back, and it came off the back of that opportunistic play, reading door. Um, you think about the impact that that had later on in the round, plus on top of that, just the amount of information that was denied. Now, again, with Siege being incredibly complex to follow, it's hard to know how many of those drones were hunted down by whom. However, with the Solace in play, I'd be willing to hedge my bets that that information was being relayed really effectively by the defense and W7M really do rely on having good reads on their opposition off the back of that during utility and knowing where the pockets of base are, where there might be you know, a weakness in defense or a lack of utility or whatever the case may be. Mm. They just simply couldn't get the read that time around and be in any real position to bring it back. 4-4 scoreline, NIP fighting tooth and nail to keep their tournament life alive. Losing the first map of Bank rather convincingly, but it was all said and done. After that 3-2 start, they lost five in a row, losing it 7-3. W7M's map pick. Unfortunately, as that map went on, W7M it just felt like it got stronger and stronger. And so far, haven't really made too many mistakes. But NIP, a little bit more resilient here on Cafe. Fighting back and forth with W7M. Their arch rivals, local rivals. So far, putting themselves at least in a position to try, try as hard as they can to send us to Clubhouse. Well, by Clubhouse is a map that we've spoken about, and it's going to be very difficult for NIP. It's a really strong map for W7M. Once again, this cigar shop setup that we see so often with the Mute, the Castle Barricade as well. We'll see how W7M look to open this up. Big responsibility on Psycho on that Azami to lock down this lounge position. Make life challenging for the likes of Herd, who seems to have a read already, but Psycho, he gets one. It's untraded. That angle can't be found by Herd, so KZ falls unanswered, which is pretty rare to see from W7M. Yeah, it is. And, and a Psycho playing a very difficult position as well, where it can be very easy if you make one misstep, lose your life, but he's also trying to get aggressive, trying to get himself close to these windows. Found one onto KZ. Musi, though. Loses his life on the Warden. Not ideal with the Ying on the board. Three Kendallas in the back pocket as well for JV. Now they don't have to worry about Musi. Minute 40. And onto the Repel and down low goes for Lee Pox. This is of course reading in fireplace in terms of the site choice. Right grenade thrown out by Hertz. Looking to clear these key barriers. And Psycho at this point probably needs to now back off. Don't have to over aggress that lounge position. And I like the fact that he's fallen back. Misplay in terms of the Nitro Salt from Cons. And obviously lets that one go. Nade would have been able to just shoot it anyway and would have spotted that had he made his way over towards his hatch. Eventually does do so. And Pino got a kill onto Polipo. Big, big moments here for NIP. With each kill, with each pressing moment, they get themselves into a better position to extend and get themselves into a lead maybe here on Cafe. And keep in mind, Shop is still on lockdown from Cons. Yeah. So that's not really a win condition for W7M unless there's utility to help out. Now, JV could roll a Candela under that castle barricade, create some space. Won't need to, though, as Cons does actually naturally fall back. 45 seconds on the clock, keeping in mind, objective is down below second floor. W7M still contesting for top floor. I mean, yeah, they haven't even cleared out really over towards Cocktail yet, let alone anything else really on that third floor. Ping hurts. Might just go aggressive here. Cons up close to the shotgun. An incredible moment here comes to fruition, and Cons does not miss that moment and swings out to Pillar. Nade was not expecting that. Finally, they'll clear Cocktail, but damage done in the round already. In a round that is probably just about over, unless JV does something big here. Could have got that kill, could have then played off the yellow ping. The time was always going to be a big factor in cons eventually. Nice rotate. We've got ourselves a game here on Cafe. And VIP have got themselves a lead late in the piece. 5-4, to four, heading into the 10th round. 
again, and I pay two rounds in a row, finding an opportunistic play and punishing rare mistakes from their counterparts in W7M who have now taken their tactical timeout in this series, trailing here on Cafe, fighting for their spot at six Invitational 2024. Of course, if required, a third map does loom, but for W7M, especially considering they're in the lower bracket and looking to go for three lands straight, this is a series that they should probably be finishing off in a two-way fashion. Yeah, I agree with that. I think for W7M, if this goes to a third map, that already again continues to sort of highlight at least that this is six Invitational, that they're not at full strength. They're not playing as probably the best level of Siege that they can bring to the table. But as it continues on, at what point do you go, well, this is just the W7M that we've got for this event? At what point can you really sit back and say, are they going to wake up and become the behemoth that we know that they are? I think they're vulnerable. I think they're a team that is certainly vulnerable to the top, top teams at this event. And we're seeing that even by NIP here on Cafe. Really strong in their approach, the game plan employed, where it's like, okay, we're going to be aggressive in our defense. We're going to extend over the shop. We're going to have this lounge approach on a reading five place defense. Make it difficult for W7M to get map control, get into the map. Then they fall back on their own volition. And the whole way through, W7M never really got into the round because of the way that NIP played it. 5 4 lead, rightfully so, rightfully deserved here by Ninjas in Pajamas. Can they get themselves into a position to establish a couple of map points? Well, let's wait and see. Round 10 looms, and we are heading to the top floor. In terms of the defensive setup and structure, it's actually probably not going to be too Five different from what we saw previously. I'm expecting again that shop extension with the castle on the double door. And Psycho will play a huge role inside of Lounge, anticipating that he'll look to play that with the barriers. One thing to note though, the mirror is in play. So Wizard will be utilizing that pretty traditional positions facing again into Lounge. If W7M want to go for that head on approach, it could prove to be a challenge. No Ash, no Twitch. So there'll be a reliance on the buck down below. And honestly, from the lineup that we're seeing, I wouldn't be shocked if we end up seeing a pivot from W7M to go for a more cocktail-centric push. Herds has been allowed into the map very early on. Again, a huge strength of W7M for the most part of this series is getting these Whoa. players in play, making positions. Herds with the skeleton key. Can they get this pick up above into shop? I think that's cons right above. Right above this hatch. It is taken to half health. Oh! He takes it. What an ego peak. What a kill from cons. And what a game that he's having. Skeleton key. Shot from below. Yeah, I'll still just pick that anyway. Nathan in his direction. He runs back in though to an open hatch with KZ looming down below. Lurking. Four versus four. Lovely trade from KZ to reposition himself. That adrenal surge from KZ was also thrown out incredibly quick to try and help out herds. But he got dealt with by cons. Over to White Stairs. Barbed wire getting taken out. And yeah, Jab as well already activated. So that's not going to do much in the late round for JV on the Nomad. 90 seconds left. 10th round. Can NIP find a way to get themselves a couple of map points? Really put the pressure onto W7M. Drone shot out. Still quite a few remaining. All eyes on Wizard. Key position held. Felipox does one, spot one cocktail alongside the chassis frag, frag, as he plays that repel. Hazy now to push forward, but Psycho to deny. Can W7M now a player down respond and deny map point from ninjas in pajamas? It's difficult, isn't it? Because he's got Felipox still outside on the repel, so he hasn't really got into that map. He hasn't got control the way his teammates had. You know, Hertz and KZ, they got in nice and early, but they lost their lives. One for one trade, that's going to favor NIP. They're still up that three versus two advantage. There goes Fully Pox 2 on the repel. Dead to Pino, and it's only Nade left on the roof. Ninjas in pajamas are about to send us, maybe, maybe, to a third map if they can continue this little onslaught that they've got developing on the defensive cafe. Map, match points, looming. Nade by himself through shop. Over to New Belt. 30 seconds is all that remains. He takes out the default, but they know exactly where he is located. He spots one. He gets the head onto Psycho. And suddenly, this can be winnable. With the kit in hand, he can play the plant game. He can go for these kills. Should know roughly where one of these players is located. But Pino doesn't miss his chance. Doesn't miss his shot. And NIP get themselves two map points. Fantastic work there from NIP and W7M again unable to get their teeth into the attack. A lot of it was centered around the grim and the space that he could make by avoiding things like the mirror windows facing into lounge. It didn't start off well for W7M, but eventually the trade did come through. 
DV as well was able to drop the Skyline and was in an advanced position. But NIP, their awareness, especially on the side of defense, is the best we have seen Attack in this series so far. Yeah. They are minimizing mistakes and they are punishing W7M. Yeah, really solid from NIP here on Cafe. They look like they're just getting better and better as the map continues. Can they then maybe take that form into Clubhouse if we get there? Of course, admittedly, W7M Attack not a team you want to be counting out. Two rounds, not a lot. They can certainly send us to overtime. But for NIP, this is the best of look in this series. And that's a concern. 4W7M. Bank, yeah, was pretty one-sided for the most part. 7-3, 2W7M after a strong start for NIP. They kind of looked a little gassed. They got completely overshadowed by W7M's very aggressive defense. W7M's defense didn't do as much here on Cafe. And NIP were able to poke holes in it, get themselves a good first half. And now they're capitalizing on their own defense. Two map points. As we head over towards mining for the first of the two. I don't think we can understate how impressive of a half this is, right? Only yesterday, NIP took on Virtus Pro here on Cafe. A match that went 8-6 in favor of VP. Guess how many defensive rounds NIP got in that game? Two. There you go. Only two. Now facing the back-to-back -back land winners of W7M. They are doing a phenomenal job at the moment. Yeah. Admittedly, W7M played Virtus Pro as well on this particular map. Lost that one 3-7. So a little bit of history there for both of these teams against VP. Under the roof we go for Fully Pots. The Amari being brought as well by Nate, coupled with the Yink, the Ram. Sensing maybe a fast play for W7M at some point in the round. Doesn't have to come through straight away, but it certainly can at a moment's notice. The Solus though, super impactful. Guys, there's only four drones remaining already in the round for W7M. Cons has been a standout player for the defense so far, now holding this pillar position. He'll be looking to scan for information. Flashes to come through, and it's Philippox to get first. Nade is now in the objective, or rather the map. The SMG in hand, he may pose a threat. Do NIP have a read on this position? They do now. I don't think so, but Nade gets drone. flashed out by his teammate. Just got drone. Psycho should know that he's being completely enveloped around this position. Music, can he help out as well from shot? No, Trey can't come through because of that castle barricade. All Music can really do is hold his own position, hold his own angles, hold his own. Well, the rest of his team falls apart. He too falls as well inside a shop. This is why at no point should you ever count out a two-time major champion. Five on one. Con's the one, as good as he's been. Would take something special, very special. Otherwise, this is very much looking at 6-5. Very much W7M to deny one of these map points. Indeed, it will be flawless. 6-5. And a chance maybe could go begging for NIP here if they cannot close out before overtime. So they decide, let's have a timeout. Let's talk things over. Let's discuss how we want to play this final map point. W7M going in for the kill in that previous round. And that classic split attack that we've become accustomed to really coming into fruition. Ramping up the pacing as well. Live droning the players that were able to get their feet into the building quickly. Often, or well, sometimes, the, the most difficult part of Cafe, just getting in and applying pressure to the defense. But they did a phenomenal job at it. We'll see if this tactical pause, though, for NIP will be enough because I fear the same. If this ends up going to overtime, that is the environment in which W7M are going to thrive and it's going to be so much more challenging for Ninjas in Pajamas to close it out post-regulation if they don't finish it right here, right now and send us to map three. It's interesting you mentioned the pace that was picked up there for W7M and it was really good to see from them. They're already a team that moves quite rapidly when it comes to entries, roughly about a minute and 13 seconds in terms of that time on entry and really making their presence felt and known. I think it was even faster in that round, especially bringing the Amaru. They still had the Ying, and they've been utilizing that Ying quite well. The Amaru was able to really just get that sight, well, not sight control, but that Burt above sight. So we got a reading and fireplace for the final map point of NIP, at least in regulation. W7M looking to send this one to overtime, and if they do so, the pressure immediately just goes back onto NIP and tenfold, considering, of course, if this goes to OT, NIP are very much then at the verge of being knocked out of Six Invitational, having already dropped that opening map of Bank. It's a reading and five place, Paramount. It's that team performance, but we've seen some very impactful kills from the likes of Psycho, Hino at times as well. Wizards had some big plays. Hans has been so efficient, 10 kills as well. Who's going to be the one that stands up for NIP? Maybe though, who's going to be the one for W7M? 
to send this one to overtime. Attackers objective is to locate a bomb and defuse it. So then it will be a shop lounge combo here from NIP facilitated by the castle and Azami. Last time W7M leaned into the repel game, they found it tricky to clear, not really given an opportunity to pivot after losing the first pick. No Ying this time. Interesting from W7M. Yeah, focus on explosives. Ash brought in. Salmas as well available for nades. Sophia still stands. So in terms of the economy itself for the attack, quite favorable. All comes down though to that execution. This is where moments are made though at six invitational in the playoffs. Map point round. Nitrous off. Come on. Oh. Oh. He gets the kill onto Philippe Pox. Talk about an opening start to the round. Exactly what NIP would have wanted, desired. Yellow ping. Over towards washrooms. Musi on the Aruri. Has been pinged out. They're unable to do anything right now. And I love the double stack as well. In towards backstore with the Azami looking to really keep the pressure on. Forward facing over towards that lounge and shop position. Barricade still up as well inside a shop. And of course, we're seeing an aggressive cons. W7M is sitting and waiting. There needs to be an initiative tool here from W7M to clear this key barrier to create some space. Perhaps Herds. some flashbangs from JV92 or explosives elsewhere. Herds on the lurk though as JV92 finally well, drops the Azami. That now should unlock lounge. And W7M can begin to really get their teeth into this attack. That's a massive pick. I'm assuming Psycho must have just overpeaked from that backstall position. JV92 opens things up a little bit in terms of that lounge control. Herds has been down below in towards mining, slipping on in. Trying to maybe catch someone off guard. Oh, the drop! Oh, but he's the one that gets caught! Like Batman dropping down! Herds goes down, JV over towards Piano, and suddenly the round can fall apart for W7M if they can't find a way back. Nade's gonna open up shot position. They'll all play off each other. It's all a triple stack. Over towards this lounge and shot position for W7M, playing off of each other. No real split, no real map control outside of what these three have been able to attribute to the top floor. Yeah, NIP falling off the roam, content with the amount of time that has been wasted. W7M fighting from behind to keep this map alive. Only 40 seconds on the clock and they have an opportunity perhaps to pluck a kill. Bit of vert presence here from KEZ. Breach charges in the pocket to be deployed on cocktail down below. NIP giving nothing away for free. It's been the trademark for this defensive half and it will continue here on the final round of regulation. Like days of old, it feels like the 22nd medal once again here. W7M though forced into it. Certainly don't like this. Nate has slipped in for a default plan. Not sure what the cover is going to be like here. No nitrous cell, so certainly nothing from above. Nice kill there from KZ over on the belt. Over towards Pillars to keep the pressure on. JV, they're somehow doing it. Down and using a one on three. W7M have slipped in somehow towards default plant down getting the kills and nip have been suffocated musi towards pillars expects the swing from 90. it does come through needed to hit that second shot at this point though for nade he just cannot reveal his position go prone hide and that's probably then the round he gets away in towards cocktail and with that w7m are going to get away with an absolute steal somehow nip have allowed this one to go to overtime but what a play from W7M. There's nothing that music can do. The entry is basically a death trap. The round is essentially over and we go to overtime. <laughs> wow, perfect levels of coordination, discipline, composure. Insane from W7M. Had the read Brown stairs, second player covering the plant default. That route was allowed to be opened up and NIP unable to deny the plant ruthless from W7M, just when it felt like NIP finally had the edge. They were playing with the house advantage for the majority of that round, but what a read here from KZ to drop both players. Oh. JV92 playing protection elsewhere, oh. and you can see from NIP, they are in pure disbelief. That was not necessarily NIP playing that too poorly. They but. tried to deny it in a relatively default manner. In fact, they tried to double stack pillar and yeah. flank from behind. Despite that, W7M had the read and executed They it. knew that W7M were going to be planting late round. So what do you want to do to that? You want to double swing pillar and eventually then overload that position of default, double swing in, deny, either deny plant or at least get the planter after they've already gotten the plant down. They obviously just did not afford the fact that they still had vert. They, in terms of W7M, on that belt, looking down, get the kill brown, get the kill pillar, and suddenly... That just completely flipped around on its head. An incredible play from W7. I would love to know who called that out because that's not exactly... I mean, it's default for a reason. It, the, the round wasn't shaping up in that way. They were able to then utilize what they had gained 
and then played off of that. It really goes to obviously highlight how good W7M can be. And they make these set plays. And NIP just looked a little bit shell-shocked with the way that that round finished off. Regardless, we go to overtime now. Job done. Two map points offset by W7M. Now, two rounds away from sending NIP out of this tournament. Fortunately, the trip home for NIP is not a very long one. Brazil is a big country. Well, it is a big country. Well, I don't know. <laughs> compared to some other teams, it's not that long. No. Certainly not. Oh, eyes on KZ then. He's inside of Lounge, and this has been a hallmark of cafe defense in this matchup. The Azami inside of Lounge, often making or breaking it for either team. So we'll see how NIP look to deal with it. They have the tools available. Grenades in the hands of Muzi. Hive launcher available from Pino to gather information. And cons as well. He's jumped on to the Blitz. 12 kills for him so far. He's been huge on defense yeah, for NIP. We'll see if he can replicate that here on attack. Yeah, interesting that he goes on to the Blitz. Not so much, I guess, him individually, although he has been fragging out, but just bringing the Blitz in such a do or die round for NIP and not really bringing as much else around it to really make it super strong. I guess the Finker with the Adrenal Surge, Grim, obviously, to get some information and then play off of that positional information that you can get from the Hive Launcher. 90 seconds left. What is the plan here for NIP? How fast can they go in terms of this bar cocktail site? Do they just drop Skylight? Pop red. Musi already around that red stairs position. But other than that, they don't have really a whole lot being done in this round. Oh my goodness, Hurts with an acute angle. A pixel of an angle. The catch cycle off completely. They lost another elsewhere as well. The Pino did get at least one back on the Grim. Musi now just has to go. Has to make something happen. The smoke to drop off the Blitz and dead immediately. Hurts just denies that, that drop down. That plan completely just unfolds before the very eyes of NIP. Musi, it's the kills though for NIP. Keeping them in this round somehow with 50 seconds left. It's only a two versus three. Despite plan A going up in flames, plan B is basically just run around and click some heads. And right now they're doing a good job of that Pino and Musi. 40 seconds on the clock, Pino did drone forward and get some space over towards Lounge, but we'll see if NIP are able to capitalize upon this as W7M have fallen back. Line of sight towards the default plant. Ninjas in pajamas taking forever to cook up that attack. W7M with the perfect read in response. And just like that from 6-4, it's now 6-7. Seven. 7 for W7M. An overtime match and series point, and maybe the pressure just really lifting off of their shoulders. When they were down 6-4, they really did kind of get a feeling inside of the server that this one was shaping up to go NIP's way. Regardless of what Clubhouse could or would look like, we may never know if NIP cannot overcome now this match point deficit. Their tournament, their six invitational life is on the line at the hands of W7M after having two map points, after having one chance in, in overtime to get themselves back into match point territory. They find themselves on the back foot, but once again, they find themselves at least on defense, where they looked pretty good. And what an unfortunate storyline, or end to the story, I suppose, for NIP if they're knocked out at this point of time. Of course, go back far enough, six invitational winners in 2021. Yeah. Failed to qualify for the event last year, which was a huge disappointment. They were sorely missed at the event. Having an impact on their return here at SI24, and no doubt given a rough bracket against their counterparts in W7M, but no doubt if they peter out here, especially without sending it to a third map, it would be an immense disappointment. I think it also a little bit of a disappointment too, because NIP's played quite well at various stages throughout the series. Start a bank, the middle and later portions here of this cafe, but W7M, every single time there's any kind of threat. Look at that from Collins, that's wonderful. Collins has been great, 13 and 10, but very impactful kills. But we've seen NIP in this position before, at the end of regulation, where they went up four, five versus four in the round. A massive clutch towards default for W7M. And, and that's the difference, I think, between the two teams in terms of that clutch ability factor. W7M have probably been better in that regard and far more consistent at as well. Nades come out, looking to clear out and create something there as we got Bar Cocktail once again here on the defense for NIP. No Kendallas, and straight in we go. The Amaru for JV92 was strong last time out. Fakes plants, then pushes over to Plank's top white stairs. No real response, not just straight away. What? And then eventually double pinched as he kept pushing forward. JV was seeking that contact, begged for it. 
And unfortunately for his sake, he gets on the wrong side, and that's Kit down in a perilous position. KZ, frag grenade to try and dislodge this place and maybe recover said Kit. An aggressive play there from JV92. If he had his time again, perhaps would have gone for something different, but you can't blame him for trying to force something with his team trailing here on this attacking round of Cafe. Oh, they're down and out. NIP respond on the defense. I mean, look, some, question, some questions have to be asked there. I mean, I kind of understand JV's thinking. You go for the plant, the fake it, expecting someone top white to eventually look to come in and swing off of the sound cue. Understandable, but he doesn't find anyone initially. And then he continues to push even deeper to the point where you are now vulnerable because you're standing top white. You can be seen all the way from pixel, any kind of washroom swing, and then, of course, someone on white stairs. That's kind of the question mark there in terms of that play from JV. But outside of that, I mean, it's just a really solid round from NIP. Again, here opens up cons, Nitro Cell. We've seen this already from NIP on the defense. There's that double pinch. Obviously, NIP's defense over towards Cigar Shop has also been pretty good so far throughout this map of Cafe. So everything else was really good for NIP. Just that one little question mark there from, from JV and for W7M. But I think, for all intents and purposes, he probably could have stuck that plan to the beginning of the round. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean... Potentially. I mean, we'll never know. I, well, I would we, have, will, we will never know. <laughs> I, I would have faith in NIP probably denying it, and that's why the initial play was probably okay. Probably just over committing to it in the end. But again, hard to pin the blame solely on JV92. 7-7. Seven, seven. We get ourselves that magical 15th round, though, and well-deserved, might I Five add. NIP really could have probably hung their heads a little bit. Yeah, they got a little bit beaten up on, on bank. Yeah, it was a tough start as well here on Cafe. Their own map pick down 3-1 to begin with. Brought it back. At one point, winning five of six rounds. Eventually then even establishing two map points themselves before succumbing to the W7M onslaught. And now we head down to Kitchen. Hopefully where we can serve up the main course for what's going to be the most clinical of rounds. W7M looking to send NIP home. NIP looking to continue their journey here at Six Invitational and head us to Clubhouse. That is what is at stake in this one singular round. So the lineup here from the attack suggesting that we're going to see top down control be a main focal point. Obviously, Pino on the buck. He's the primary soft breach or, or vertical player rather, and he'll be looking to get lines of sight. Keep in mind that Flores is also in play, direct counter to the Azami, and can also create rotations if required. Shotgun as well, available to the gridlock, I presume, and flank watch as well. So we'll see how NIP look to execute and how long it takes for W7M to have the cogs turning because the longer it takes for NIP to set up plays, and we've seen it in the past, the better the chance W7 have for reading into it yep. and quickly formulating a response, a counter, a way to shut it down. Also curious how aggressive W7M is going to get here. And obviously a very do or die round. There's the first contact. Pino swings in towards train. KZ, KZ somehow survives, makes the cross, takes a little bit of damage. The first contact made, Pino's position known over towards Pillars. 90 seconds remaining in the round. KZ expecting maybe either a drone to come through. The way that he's kind of positioned that crosshair. Or a player eventually to come through mining. The adrenal surge though handy, at least for Pino. Does mean slight advantage over KZ. They're going for the pinch. They're going for that little pinch to try and get rid of KZ. He's got to be careful. They don't come through fire place initially. Thinking better of it. There's that drone. There's that information. Should get the kill. And for so. Nicely done from Pino. Playing off the live drone. 60 seconds left. And once again, advantage NIP. No one from W7M able to render assistance. The key thing though for KZ is he wasted a lot of time. Didn't give away his life purely for free. Didn't freak out, had the composure to waste as much time as he possibly could. Now with 45 seconds on the clock, the groundwork from NIP needs to be swift. We'll see that Matera come through from Psycho when he deals with the Castle Barricade. Will though Herds in VIP be the one to flip it around? He's holding VIP, still has the deployable shield, and he's under pressure. Will he be able to rise to the occasion Retero. or can NIP clear him out? Shield has been blown up in VIP, so a little bit more susceptible now. 20 seconds left and your life here at Six Invitationals on the line. JV needs to be cleared out inside a whiskey. The brown stairs position is something that NIP want to push through. Again, VIP, a little bit vulnerable now without that deployable shield. Drop down successful oh. and a wonderful shot from Cons. On to Hurd, he's been the main two guy. Goo mine again, double goo mine. In fact, looking for the default land behind the bomb chassis. Cons will fall. Numbers now with W7M and out of time. Psycho has to get the plant down and he cannot. Unfortunately, time was the big factor and W7M will send NIP packing out of six invitational once 
champions. Now they fall early stages of Six Invitational. NIP no longer what they once were. W7M continue on their journey and now look ahead to Space Station Gaming. And just when it looked like a third map was looning, the Legion playing spoils there for ninjas in pajamas who despite their best efforts there on Cafe, unable to close it out in overtime. And that was always the factor that we are aware, were aware of, that W7M in OT, they thrive and often survive in those scenarios. Yeah, disappointing for NIP to go out in that fashion. So close, yet so far. Again, another round, and it felt like they had quite a few of them throughout that game of Cafe, where they got early advantages, they got opening kills, they got good position. But when it came down to that late round execution, for the most part, W7M were just that little bit better. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, now it sets the stage, right? That W7M game against uh, SSG, as you aforementioned, is going to be an absolute oh. banger. SSG have been playing very well at this tournament. W7M clearly are wounded and are playing at their absolute best just mm. yet. Obviously, this isn't necessarily the point of the tournament where you need to play perfectly, but you need to be so careful in this lower bracket that you don't get sent home early. Yeah, and, and obviously we go back to the highlights here, back on bank. Really good start for NIP. The uh, emotions were high. We had this amazing clutch here as well from JV, which really offset what was likely to be a 4-2 half to begin on bank against W7M for NIP. But from that point on, and basically from that clutch on, it really just came down to an onslaught from W7M. Really good clutches again. That late round execution, that's the difference maker. Those are the little differences that can really set apart the best of the best versus those that are pretty good, but not good enough. And I think that's probably the best way to summarize NIP here at Six Invitational. Good, but not good enough. And clearly just didn't have that clutch factor when it came to those late round plays that we saw from W7M. And I felt like, again, at times on Cafe, yeah, shake of the head because there were plenty of rounds that NIP looked good, but just didn't finish off their good work. I think on a positive note, though, for NIP, Cons in particular, Cons map was great. 2 had... Psycho a, had some good clutches. He was insane. And you look back at their uh, match against Virtus Pro, Cons was by far and away the lowest rated player. Uh, 0.63, negative 8 in terms of KD. Wouldn't have guessed that looking at this match where he stepped up massively. Yep. Unfortunately, though, probably a little bit too reliant on him, whereas W7M, as we come to expect, very well-rounded. Yeah, I mean, Herds was obviously sensational back on Bank. Obviously, we saw KZ really stand up to the plate as well on Cafe. You know, this is the thing. NIP had two match points. Like, they had two match points on Cafe. W7 didn't just, like, kind of scrape by some, you know, low-level APAC team or, or Mana team or anything. Like, they took down a very strong NIP team that was giving it everything they had to try and keep themselves alive in this tournament. Cons popped off. He had a great tournament. Psycho, yeah, not great in terms of first cool category, but he was probably one of the better players when it did come to that late-round clutch and get some kills at times in a couple of really good moments. W7M had to really give their all. They had to play really well, and it was a team effort. Look at those EPSs. And look at the KDs. There's not really many members on the side of W7M, at least on Cafe. And mind you, KZ stats maybe don't look great here. He was sensational on bank. So it took every ounce of effort from W7M to defeat NIP. And they did it 2-0. Good news for them. Now they go up against Space Station Gaming. That's going to be a sensational match to watch. Cannot wait to see who wins that. And the fact that one has to go home. Both have played so well at this tournament for SSG and for W7M. Unfortunately, of course, we bid farewell to NIP and their chance at... You know, participating in the arena, that's something that as a team, I think they really, really would have wanted to do in front of the Brazilian home crowd. But alas, going up against W7M, they meet their demise relatively early in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, what a game. And the fact that it only went to two and I'm exhausted, I can only imagine what it's yeah. like for the players inside of the server as we um, have a look at the match summary. Herds by far and away, the MVP 178 EPS. A lot of that was off the back of his performance on bank, of course. Um, if you cast our minds back to the defense, he was so, so challenging to take down, and NIP struggled to formulate responses. I think it obviously narrowed on map two, as is naturally the case in this kind of series. However, W7M, too far rounded. Stats reflect that and NIP will need to polish that moving forward. Yeah, obviously we say goodbye to NIP now. What two for W7M, SSG? How do you kind of rate that matchup moving forward in the lower bracket? Obviously SSG taking down Bleed 2-0. Heartbreaking fashion, of course, for Bleed losing the last five rounds of that game. They, are, they were up 6-3. Talk about the mental dexterity for, for SSG to close that out from down 6-3 to win it out 6-8. I mean, it says everything. Or 7-8. Or I feel like SSG probably have that bad boy energy about them, right? And if they knock out... Yeah. W7M and deny them from the live stage. I don't think they're going to get the warmest of receptions. No, I don't think they are. All right, well, we've still got another series to come here today, so don't go too far. For now, though, we do head to a break on the B-Street.